on, everyone? It's episode 115, recorded Sunday, December 18th, 2022. I'm Hambone, and hey, Santa Coos. Hey, hey and Hambone. Ka- Andy, a young newlywed couple, wanted to join a church. And the pastor told them, we have a special requirements for new parishioners. You must abstain from having sex for two weeks. The couple agreed and came back at the end of the two weeks. The pastor asked them, well, were you able to get through two weeks without being intimate? Pastor, I'm afraid we were not able to go without sex for two weeks, John replied. What happened? inquired the pastor. Ka'andi was reaching for a can of corn on the top shelf and dropped it. When she bent over to pick it up, I was overcome with lust and took advantage of her right there. You understand, of course, that this means you are not welcome in our church, stated the pastor. That's okay, said the young man. We're not welcome in the grocery store anymore either. set on another day and now it's time to grab a cold one and enjoy the dads after dark show with your hosts drew and john what is up everyone on tonight's episode the four horsemen unite we have games games and games even some trivia and of course our 2022 games of the year with all four of us gentlemen what a day mid-december christmas is upon us what a day for the sports world besides the Patriots. <laughs> but hey, we're here. John, how you doing, buddy? What have you been up to? Oh my goodness. I did nothing all weekend, but uh Me too. we were we were almost delayed by a Patriots overtime, and then to see how that ended was hilarious. I still there's still a big part of me that does not like the Patriots after all the Brady years, and I can't shake it, and it was wonderful. <laughs> but that soccer game was amazing. I, soccer I, game was great. That's the first time I watched a soccer game like on the edge of my seat. That was. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I'm gonna be completely honest here. It was two nothing. There was ten minutes left. I really wanted to watch Tiger and Charlie Woods, and I changed the channel for a few minutes, and then I did an alert on my phone that the game is now two to two, and I said, <laughs> "What? Like, yeah. like that doesn't happen in soccer, right? You don't score With two the same goals guy. in five minutes. I it's it's crazy. It's crazy. That was crazy. So. What a damn! What a damn! Who do we who do we got with us today? Who are these guys? Fine gentlemen, Santa Cruz, buddy. How are you doing? Hey, I'm awesome, man. I was uh, I was driving to work today, and they had I had it on Sport Denver Sports Radio, and they had the soccer game. On uh, they were pretty much play by play. It wasn't live, but they were like, "This is happening. This is happening." <laughs> And then once the soccer game was over, they were like, we know that you Denver Broncos fans are pissed off because we've been talking soccer for the last hour. It's okay. Now you can be happy because we're about to talk about the Broncos and the Cardinals for the next hour. And so I changed the channel (laughs) right there immediately and just flipped it. So, yeah, Yeah, I didn't I didn't watch the soccer game in, in on TV. But, man, that it sounds like it was amazing. Was amazing. He's amazing. You know, and I hope this made people realize. I mean, soccer, it's a great number one sport in the world. That's a fact. Uh-uh. So people need to uh, embrace it. Who cares, though? It doesn't matter that it's the best sport in the world. It's not the best sport here. Right. Right. Is, I mean, look what, at you is watching. NASCAR, I think, the number one sport in America. I hope not. Is it really? I'm, I'm pretty confident it is. So. Oh, my God. So it's not what I'd rather have soccer. Baseball. Anyways, Hambone, the one wheel champion himself, maybe an Olympia up, someday. I, I got to say, John. The one wheel is taking over New England. I can't tell you how many places I've seen it lately. All over the place, man. They're great. Yeah. How can't you doing? Beat it. Good, man. Good. Just having a, a good old December weekend here in Connecticut. So it's pretty chilly out there. But uh took Friday off, bought some carpet, uh, watched Survivor. Didn't get to the finale yet. But oh. um, ooh. yeah, they, they did. Um, so on the, the penultimate episode. So they did that guy dirty at the end. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to spoil yeah, they did Cody dirty, man. I felt Listen, bad for him. Yeah. If you're not watching Survivor, then, I mean, what, what are you doing with your life? Come on, You're John. watching the Mets. Oh, hang on. You're I haven't watched Survivor, Survivor so. Watching the Mets. Yeah, let's not talk about any Survivor. It's all spoilers to me. Yeah. Oh, all right. You know what's not a spoiler? <laughs> Season 44, baby. Only three months. Not even. March 1st. Who's ready? Let's do I'm it. Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. 
so yeah, man, it was great. You know, just had a nice little weekend with the family. Went some mini golf today. Uh, yeah, ate some that. cookies. Yeah, it was awesome, man. It was like there was we were the only two people in there for for a little bit. It was awesome. My wife was at That's a cookie cool. swap. She was brought it? home like mountains of cookies. Oh, it was awesome. The best. Monster mini golf. It was monster mini golf, pretty much. Yeah. So it's it's <laughs> branded the my... cave here, but it basically okay. was monster. Mini oh, okay. Golf. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was fun. Can we talk about that? Is it? It's. I mean, like, I know we had a taboo topic last week, but can we talk about what it feels like when you take the kid or kids somewhere and the wife isn't around, yeah. and it's a different experience? It is different. Can I talk it about is. that? Because that's kind of fun. It's actually kind of fun. I know. It it's is very fun. fun. <laughs> you get to be like yes. the hero, right? Dad, can yeah. I have this? You know what? Sure, kid. Like, yeah, you know, you just, you just feel feel yeah. power. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Spent 25 bucks at the arcade, walked out of there with a the snap bracelet. And I'm like, great investment. <laughs> awesome time. <laughs> Blame education. you in a way. Yeah. yeah. You're going to do better than that. And, it's my own and fault. Right? Walk, it's fun. When you, when you go somewhere with just you and the kids, too. Like all the women look at you like, oh, look at the good dad taking his kids yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. You're like, yeah, you look at me. Single dad. My wife died in an accident. What are you doing later? You know, it's like, exactly. I mean, it's a little yeah. dark, but I mean, <laughs> like I've, I've had situations where I had the kids, wife's not around and it's like, all right, I'm going to stop by Taco Bell and get like 30 tacos. Like that's dinner tonight. You know, that's so sort of thing. I'm thinking one night stand. You're thinking 30 tacos. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted nice. to make sure we're on the Perfect. same page there. Op- the yeah. opportunities there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And maybe both. Same time. <laughs> <laughs> all right just before before we get started though let's do you know a little video game really quick video game chat what have you guys been playing because what have you been playing this past week or two oh i don't know that i was prepared for this question because it that's wasn't on it. the show notes that's right what are you it's playing uh, ma'am what are you that's playing? it that's the question uh this is why no one wants freshly to take a frosted. picture with i've been playing freshly frosted joke. straight up that's what i've been playing wow I, I, can you give me like the 30 second elevator pitch? Cause I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, it's a puzzle game where you line up donuts and have to run them through different machines in order to sell them. Yeah. Like that. That's a, yeah. That's one it. may just have frosting. One may have frosting and sprinkles and the toppings continue and the hardness continues and the contraptions continue. <laughs> wow. Ooh. I mean, the, hard, the party continues. continues. <laughs> yeah. The party continues. Party continues. Good. I heard Rainbow. it's on Luna. <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna say that like i i was i was That's mocking I luna around. and saying like what is this shitty game and Hambone's like oh that sounds interesting the next thing i know he's blasting through it on on switch or xbox yeah you're it playing awesome. it suddenly everyone's playing it this is how it works this i blame Hambone completely because he posted the screenshot like look it's like look at the metacritic scores on this it's so high and i was like you know what that's that's a relaxing game that i would like to try i don't it's have nice time to game. sit down and play some of these big blockbuster games, but I can make mm. some donuts now real quick. Yeah. And was it better than Hammer Kid? Yes. I mean, that wasn't hard. Wow. Good answer. Go. That should be out in the back of the box. What better, than Hammer Hammer Kid? better than Hammer <laughs> Kid. Yeah. <laughs> better than Hammer Kid. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm playing a bunch, man. I'm playing uh, Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion. I'm about eight hours into that. Started that up on uh, Thursday. I had a nice day off there, so I was able to put in a good chunk of time. It's uh, it's a fun time. Definitely a, a PSP game, you can tell, but um, it plays very much like the the newer Final Fantasy VII remake. So, uh, sort of an old game with a new skin on it. So it's pretty fun. Hmm. Um, nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's on Switch too. So, uh, if you're interested there. I wanted to ask because I haven't. I mean, I've played Final Fantasy VII. I haven't played remake, but Crisis Core is the prequel to Final prequel. Fantasy VII. Do, are there characters that are in Final Fantasy VII already in Crisis Core, or is this going to be like yes. maybe at the end? Oh, okay. yeah, no, yeah. So Sephiroth is is in there. He's a main uh, character. Cloud is in there. You sort of beat Cloud and and sort of his origin story. Um, okay. Yeah, so there's definitely cool. recognizable characters there. It's cool. it's good. It's good. And then um, I threw an Elden Ring a little bit just to uh, <gasps> get acquainted with the discussion for tonight. So I started a new character. Ooh. He, uh, Cyclops, the the prophet. So blue skin, oh. yellow headband, little red scar. Mm-hmm. Looks just like Cyclops from uh, <laughs> from X Men. So love and life there. 
Um, uh, and nice. yeah, man, it's a good time. And then I just uh, played some high on life too. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Speaking of the profit, that reminded me of a game we've been playing, Dicey Elementalist on the mobile. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's super fun. Dude, good damn. You guys, if you ever need a good shitter game, this is the game. A really good shitter game, too, man, because it's long, but then you can do like a battle or two, wipe mm-hmm. it up, and then move on with your day. And then next time you visit the toilet, there you go. It's Continue right, right there waiting for you. Did you Beautiful. say wipe it up? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't sure if you were first in the game or his <laughs> asshole. I was leaving that to your imagination, but if you want to call it out, that's fine. Maybe both. Maybe both, man. I don't know. It's up to wow. you. I, wow. Maybe you have a bidet. I, I don't know. I oh, know. I got a bidet. We can talk bidet yes. all day. That's why I John's like, you wipe? What and do you yeah, mean, a peasant? Bidet. Life-changing, a man. <laughs> Life-changing. I, I, I'm too... Anyways, John, what have you been playing? <laughs> um... I, I did start Vampire Survivors. I got it on mobile just so I could see what ah, kind of game it was. Nice. But it, and I'm like, I'm going to but I'm not going to really play it on mobile. But like when it when it eventually comes out on Switch, I wanted to know. And it's like, yeah, this seems pretty oh, interesting it's coming to Switch. Yeah, I had somebody I compare that. it to Loop Hero, Drew. And I was like, oh, I'm oh, out. Like, no. I know. But I if it's, it's interesting. I'm going to play a little bit more and see. Um, but I uh, this week I decided to play a Mori. Um, the the kind of weird looking RPG game that got announced in hmm. was it an indie world or was it on a direct? Um, some more. It's spelled with an O. O M O R I. Yep. Uh, it look, it, Omari. When you first see it, it's a lot of like hand drawn art, and it looks like it's a game about depression or something. Um, but um, I listened to the Ben and Phoenix podcast, and Phoenix made this his game of the year, and I was like, what? Like what? Really? Um, so I decided I wanted to play it before we did our show, just in case. And I got to say, I'm really enjoying it. It's a re- it's, it's a way different game than I thought it was going to be. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. Uh, uh, this looks like a you game. It doesn't look like a me game, really. I, I In fact, the first hour I was debating just stopping. But then in, once it kind of gets into like real RPG mode, um, it's got a great story. If you like Earthbound, you'll love this. It's it's like Earthbound. Um, hmm. So I'm really enjoying it. Interesting. How about you? What are you playing? I, I'm back on a striker's kick. Uh, the new update sucked me in, and then I saw that. Um, yeah, it's. I've been playing it. Informant, informant was in there too. Informant and I've been, been trying to play, and we played a couple games together. And yeah, well, uh, my wife and I have been playing together. Uh, good time. Oh. A little bit more Mario Kart, some new tracks, and then um, of course I've been playing yeah. Dragon Quest Treasures, and probably about. You know, six or seven hours in, I'm not like in love with it, but I don't hate it. It's fun. It's fine. It kind of reminds me of like, uh, God, I hate to compare it to it because it's it's not even closely as good. But like Xenoblade Chronicle type game style, like this big what? world. It, it, that my point is, it's this big world. We have to go out, find some treasure, trying to come back to towns. It's just like I don't know. The the quest in is kind of similar in a weird way. Um, it's okay. Jesse kind of talked about it and did a really good job explaining it, how it's just the quest system is very like weird. Like you have a quest and you're going to go give this guy three things, but one of the things you have to go do a different quest in a different part of the world and then come back. It's just it's kind of confusing. Um, but overall, I like it because every monster you find kind of goes, you kind of get it to go back and you can kind of capture him because you can, you can create a party of three people that just follow you around and auto attack. Um, so every like enemy you fight can kind of now become capturable and you can use them in your party. It's kind of an interesting little dynamic to it. That's kind of fun, but it's fun. I mean, I'll, I'll probably play through it and finish it, but, uh, yeah, it's like Treasures. you're debating yourself internally. It's fine. No, it's, it's fine. Like, there's nothing else yeah. to play. So I'm going to play it. I mean, it was there's a $60 nothing else game. to play. So, so what's the tre- the treasures? Is that a reference to like you're you're collecting loot? Or... You're a legit a treasure hunter. That the whole point oh, okay. of the game is you're a treasure hunter. You go out. There is a weird concept that you only can hold like six treasures at a time, and you have to like identify them. The only way to identify them is you go back to your castle and you you put them in like the vault and they identify them. So like if you are out exploring and there's no fast travel in this game, so you might be like fifteen minutes away and you are full of loot you either have to decide to just keep questing or you got to run all the way back and unless something unlocks later on in the game fast travel or mounts or something um that part's a little bit annoying then the more treasure you get the more you rank up the more stuff you unlock um it kind of helps boost your character from that point of view it's, it's definitely interesting it's it's, unique, cool. it's different and there's tons of items you know the typical type of 
you know, RPG where there's just tons of shit, which I kind of hate sometimes, but mm. it's fine. Yeah, just wipe it up. Wipe it up. <laughs> just wipe it up. Summer is coming. The sun is shining. Shirts are off. And your balls are smooth. You heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped are here to make sure your beach balls are as smooth as Floridian sand. In summer, you want to kill some cold beers and barbecues. Not kill the vibe with pubes peeking out your swim trunks. That's why Manscaped has their Performance Package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive headfirst into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code NINDADS. That's N-I-N-D-A-D-S. And now, back to the show. Hey, here's the deal with Manscaped. Listen, don't be a furry bastard. Your wife don't like it. You don't want smelly balls. Shave your shit and be decent. You know, just be a decent human being. Just have general care about your body. Shave your face, Mm. shave your balls, shave anything else you need to shave that doesn't look like it's supposed to be hairy. You know the deal. I like it. And, and 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 the best way to do it <laughs> is is manscaped. You know, I didn't manscaped. Get out today. of here, man. That was a fantastic read. Yeah. Hey, and then code NIN dads for twenty percent off. You can't beat it. That's it. <laughs> beat it. <laughs> but you will be speaking of beating it. Speaking See, of beating it, let's go to the bounty board. There. That's Jeez. right. The bounty board. Guys, this is going to be the last bounty board. I noticed the channel was off of Discord. There's no more bounty board channel. Channel is off. Yeah, bounties are going to be coming to an end. Well, they're they're at an end. Um, uh, they're difficult to do. They're they're difficult to figure out the right level of difficulty. Um, you try to yep. do a, a a new game and you you like you don't know what's good or what's not. You do an old game and Hambone's like, I already did that. Give me my money. You know, like that's what I happened. Did do so that one time, yes, yeah, there's sorry. there's yeah. like a. <laughs> It's like a tough balance. And we just like, we were like, nah, we're going to think about, we want new challenges. We don't want to, to just like suffer with this again. So we'll do something new and something new and funny. Hmm. Um, but let's take a look at monthly mayhem. Uh, we are in the middle of beat your backlog. Um, you got to play a game that you have never played that you have never once played. Sean and Nick <laughs> never once played, beat it, roll credits. Tell us, you know, tell us about when you bought it, why you didn't play it why you decided to play it um, and what you thought about it. Give us a good review and we're going to pick the best one. Uh, that I've got a has confession. to be done. I've got it. Yeah. Well, go ahead. What's that? Uh, I've, uh, I've never beat the original super Mario brothers. Get the fuck and I was out gonna, of here. I was going to do that as Not my easy. beat your backlog, but then you gave Sean and Nick so much shit for beating a game that they had played once already. I've Weird. played the hell out of super Mario brothers. I've never beat it. Get so I here. can't submit that, right? Well, we give him shit. You know what? Like, I'll allow well, it. I, yeah, we're, we allowed Sean and Nick submission. So if, if I mean, I feel like this is special. I feel like you should go for it. Now, oh, I was going to I was going to connect the old school Nintendo to a CRT TV and record myself beating it on there and submit it that way. For sure, I'd win, right? I think so. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that works. I'm not going to do that. I don't know. I'm that sorry. soccer game I played might be a tough one to beat. <laughs> That's true. Um, get your I'm submissions not. in by December 22nd. That is the deadline. Uh, we'll pick a winner December 23rd. And then we are off with our families for Christmas. Um, but we've got some really good submissions, so I've I've really enjoyed reading them. And then presence after dark drew why don't you update us on presence after dark where presence are we after right dark. Now? i think every person has their gift besides one people this has been a fantastic show and thank you everyone so much for partic- uh, partaking in it uh it's awesome seeing all the pictures and videos and all that other fantastic stuff that we've been been seeing on the web um yeah i got i got quite the um experience i don't even want to say it was a gift or a present it was an experience there was that was really cool it was a horde Oh, it was a horde. It was a horde of of a whore. It, it, you know, there was <laughs> magic ink involved. There was mm-hmm. dirty pictures. There was it was golf awesome. items. It was well thought out. It, yeah, you know, it was good, it, man. It's all about knowing your customer, right? You know, that's what we say in the business world. It relates to friendships as well. Um, 
No one, no one your friends, no one your customer, no one your gen. It's been uh, straight. I mean, what about you, Jen? Well, uh, first of all, I want to also say, I did a little gift outside of Presence of the After Dark for my co-host buddy John. Two gifts, actually. Oh. Uh, one of them I did a little video for. He sent, not to me, but my wife. Dirty, but lovable. Love it. Right. He sent her Life is Strange. Now, that, this was yeah. interesting because she didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I told her she had to play it. She she's 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 played it. She didn't she didn't beat it or anything, but she's she, she's played it. She played That's two cool. sessions, like two nights. She probably played like hour and a half one night, maybe another hour and a half the other night. And now, John, you know what she does? She plays, she plays. Dreamlight Valley. I know. I was gonna say like <laughs> that. That could not have gotten there at a better time, though. It was like because you were just saying like she's playing so much Dreamlight Valley on your Switch. And it was like, mm. maybe Life is Strange will save you. Maybe, maybe because I've been moving. So it's, what happened was, and I've said this before, my switch was like the main switch. And I'm, I slowly started transitioning and everything like maybe six months ago, like to the other accounts, to the other switch. But there's some games that are still locked into mine um, because of my user and because I have like the NSO online and the Dreamlight needed that and et cetera. So there's certain games I just couldn't get off of my switch. Um and that was one of them. And that's the curse. Like, so when she started Life is Strange, I made sure it was on her account on the other Switch. Uh, yeah. But so I got that. And then I second second little surprise gift he sent me was a lovely box of British chocolate. And uh, every night after dinner, John, I feel like you, we have a little dessert, my wife and I. We pick out a chocolate bar and we take turns. So we, we take turns. One day is my turn to pick one and we share it. And you know, right. that's cool. Yeah. We share did, one of these did random. Did you get those from Britain? Did you have those shipped from Britain? No, from Amazon, but um, but it's like a box. It says like the UK made fly down. It's like all chocolate. Like I've never like every. There's probably twenty chocolate bars. I yeah. never eaten any of them. They're all yeah. new to me. They're all That's international. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Cool. Some of those you can actually find locally, like the caramel one and the dairy milk. You can find like we can find in our supermarkets here. The other ones, um, I never see them in our supermarket. Mm, there's one called the Double Decker. Mm. And let me tell you. That was an explosion in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. All right. Enough about me, though. What about you guys? You guys got all your presents? Yeah. Yeah. I got. Yep. Uh, I opened mine yesterday and put out a video. I've got uh, Solo something. What a fantastic job he did. I got my cooling station mm. for my PS5, a place to charge my controllers and hold the games and hold the media remote. I mean, come on, man. What more do you want? Plus three pairs of socks. I love socks. It was me a too. great gift. <laughs> I love I those socks. Could, I couldn't agree really more with socks. what you said too about putting a new pair of socks on too. It's it's, it's, it's life changing, man. It's, it's life changing. Yeah. Who was really watching is. football during our listen, show? Listen. Which one of you put on the football game while we're recording? Drew. Drew. <laughs> you can't tell me the football game's not on your TV right oh, now. Oh, I have it on. I have it on. <laughs> <laughs> <Just fuck yourself. laughs> But what I didn't happened? interrupt the show. I didn't know the volume was on loud. I just that's, turned it on and it was that's like getting caught caught in class. <laughs> that new mic's working too well it's, it's too uh, good the sweaters are come off by the way i'm sweating my ass off oh that's funny so while you take your sweater off I'll, i yeah. guess i'll mention my my presence uh after dark so i got socks as well i'm i uh, i haven't been able to confirm but i'm pretty sure my my uh my gifter was was richard um there's a couple oh couple you don't know ways. well i wrote to him he never he hasn't written back yet being like yeah man no problem or whatever i said thank you so hopefully he got that message <laughs> But um, I, I ate like all my stuff already. He sent me some soup and some uh, hazelnut. Oh, yeah, you got the uh, snack pastries. bag, huh? Yeah, so, some vodka, um, yeah. some Mario socks. I'm actually wearing the Bowser socks right now. I'm not nimble enough to show you guys, so you'll just have to trust me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a wonderful gift. I'd actually really like to see it. it. If you don't mind, I didn't see the picture or video. Could you flex, flex for me there? There it goes. Oh, whoa. oh, those whoa. are nice. Yeah, it's like the, the, the little yeah. logo. I like that. It's very nice. I would show you more, but I already threw out my uh, my hamstring, so that's all you get. <laughs> if you would have ripped one just when you did that, it would have been the funniest clip on the internet. Uh, the yeah, maybe. Clip. <laughs> maybe I'll throw in a sound effect. You should. <laughs> this is real. Record it in post. Yeah, you did get Esco, Richard. I, I just confirmed that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Um, I got a uh, Trivial Pursuit, and then I got... Um, the uh, Life is Strange Blackwell Academy book, Ooh. which is awesome. Um, yep. Super funny. I, I, I adore it. So I uh, was really happy. And so we only have one 
person or we have we we, we have what two in route oh mecca mecca did confirm he got his gift he did um he wasn't sure who it was from but i saw the box oh no it was um from the the, the new guy what's his name he uh oh, yeah. he replied he just replied no, to it i know Bosco. yeah he didn't he didn't know no but now he knows but the box was shaped like a dick. That was what yeah. I had seen. He didn't show that, though. I know. Oh. And so now I'm wondering if if he changed his mind at the last second or or what. But that Lots box was shaped like a dick. If you're listening, we need to know oh, about this dick box. Yeah. yeah. I saw the picture. It was amazing. Yeah. I don't know how they sent that through the mail and just didn't like <laughs> fucking flag that all over the Internet, man. Oh, Maybe it got gosh. sent back. Maybe it got sent back. Maybe maybe yeah. that's what took so long. That's yeah. True. So there's just one mm-hmm. gift, uh, and then like, uh, yeah, Kevin, yours is in route, and uh, and then imagine, one other. Imagine that someone seeing this dick box and like, like a like a FedEx guy, and like, oh man, this has got to be something dirty, and open it up and find like a My Little Pony Christmas yeah. ornament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did not see that. Yeah. yeah. Slowly close his box back and shit. Just, yeah. It's like, don't want to know where this has been. He's going to get fired over opening the box, and that's what he got out of it. Yeah. Well, great stuff. Uh, but that's awesome. Hey, stuff. thank you guys for putting that together. I know I said that, that in the video, really but that was really cool. I think that was really fun. I'm glad everybody participated. It was, that was super cool. Yeah. Super cool idea. I'm, I'm normally not a big dirty Santa guy, but this was, this was nice. I mean, I feel like we're all on the same grown up you know adult child having video game playing level so it worked out pretty well awesome I think, I think next year maybe we don't i mean we'll do it next year maybe we won't call it after dark because i think mm. it insinuated that the presence did have to be after dark i certainly maybe maybe drew we make a rule that just says if you send an after dark di- gift it has to be wrapped and you have to write like something on it mm-hmm. because like it would i was nervous too like can I open this? You sent me stuff. I, I got did. a I got a boob from you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you a sent boob, me two yeah. things. One of them was a boob. And you said to open them, and I was like, well, are they kid friendly? And you said this particular box was rated between G and PG. But PG like, 13. PG 13. Yeah, I had the sense that you were you you had thought it was, and I opened it and it was a boob, and I was like, I can't believe like you thought this was, would be listen, something. It was a stress. G, ball. How is a boob rated G in in what world is a boob rated G? Because it could have been a male I boob, know. right? Yeah. yeah, I guess mm. so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like there, there's things like my kids know all the bad words, right? Like we were watching a movie the other day and they said a bad word, and it's like, look, I know the kids know all the bad words, just don't use them around the house, right? But like, and I think they know what a boob is, <laughs> but I don't want to open a boob in front of my kids. Like there's so many questions that come out. It's of a that. stress ball with a nipple. Like, let's, let's be real. You're, you're, exactly. you're making, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. that's very squeezy. <laughs> Looks like a it pacifier me, to me. Makes me yeah. think of the Witcher while I hold it. Um, <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, like maybe we'll just make a rule and say, you know, you have to wrap it and you have to write like NSFW or whatever. Um, so people know, because I think everyone was asking everybody, can I open this? Can I open this? And I think we just have to make it very clear. Um, if you want to send them that kind of gift, just to open it on your own. And I also think we should call it Drew's secret Santa or something like that. I think it'd be cute. Thank you, Chuck. About that. Appreciate Drew's. that comment. You got 12 we, months to, to workshop that name. Yeah, we got time. <laughs> yeah. 11 months. Yeah, you got, we'll you got a little the, time there. We'll have to pay Sadie to say it. I think we'll get more people yeah. next time, though. I thought we had a really good number this yeah, time. We had 19 yeah. people. It was awesome. Yeah, that I was think awesome. I think a lot of people who didn't participate saw what happened and now they, they want to do it. Oh, yeah. We've already heard from people who said that. So mm-hmm. I think next year we'll get uh, like maybe double. That was fun. What a fantastic community. It really it's is. Bunch of really good guys. Is. Yeah. Bunch of good guys. All right. I think we're done. I think it's time to talk about games of the year, gentlemen. All right, let's do this. Uh, do but it. before we do, Drew's got a little game to play. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? Nobody. I'll go. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Goose. Who's up first? Put him in the gauntlet. Welcome to the gauntlet. Bob Cousy. Yes, sir. Would you rather have Wario? Sit on your face, <laughs> or give Waluigi a hand job. Oh my Waluigi god! Waluigi hand job. 
Good deal. Why not both? Would you, would you rather? <laughs> yeah, at the same time. <laughs> uh, you know, with, would you rather have a business lunch with Doug Bowser or a one night stand with a celebrity of your choice? A one night stand with the celebrity of my choice. And who would that choice be? Anna. Carrie Underwood. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I don't I don't try. This is the gauntlet. We're gonna move on. <laughs> would you rather have a real life pet of a Goomba or a Koopa? Ooh. I felt like I've kind of had a Koopa before. This one time on my ninth birthday, this guy brought a snapping turtle home. Mm. Some random guy brought it to my stepdad and said, here, this is for your son's birthday. And the snapping turtle had chewed through the back of the guy's car seat on the way there. <laughs> Apparently, he just threw the turtle in the back of his car. So <laughs> we kept that thing in the backyard for a couple months till it died. So I felt like I've already had a Koopa. Fair so I'd go with the Goomba. <laughs> okay. Good story there. Wow. <laughs> Would you rather face the consequences of giving your kids nothing but coal for this Christmas oh. hmm. or, or accidentally shit your pants at the start of a work day and you cannot go home. <laughs> well, I've already shit my pants. That, that's already happened as well. So I've already experienced half this gauntlet. So um, uh, I'd rather give the kids coal. <gasps> oh! Just fuck I them thought, kids. I thought you were going to be such a noble dad, and it's no, like, I'll take shit the shit. Your pants, hey, listen, shit in your pants. You might get no fired job. from yeah, shit in your pants. Sucks, and, then, and, then, this, and then there's no Christmas next year either, so yeah, sorry, kids. Point. Yeah. See, this one time I took it. my brother to the airport, and I was driving back home, and I had to shit so bad. I mean, it hit me like a freight train. I couldn't stop anywhere, so I just pulled off the interstate. There was a little restaurant there, Ruby Tuesdays. I pulled up behind it, just got out. There was a dumpster back there, pulled down my pants, just started shitting immediately behind this dumpster, all on my pants because I didn't pull them down all the way. I look over and it's beside a Waffle House and the people in the Waffle House are just sitting there watching me shit behind this dumpster. And so I pull up my shit pants in like complete like embarrassment, hop in the car and have to drive home covered in shit and walk up to my apartment that I lived in in the time. Up the stairs, because I didn't want to take the elevator. I knew I'd run into somebody on the elevator. So I took the stairs, walked the stairs, and shitty draws three flights up to my apartment. It was terrible. I, would, I don't want to live through that again. I'd much rather give the kids coal, and then maybe the next day make it up with some presents, you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, but those 24 hours would be miserable. <laughs> oh, they would be. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Great question. All right. If you could not play video games anymore, they're done, never again, what would be your hobby? I don't know. Exercising? Learning other languages? Like getting buffed? Sign language? Sign language? It's not the language of choice I would think of, but... Okay. That's question. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd want to better myself mentally. Okay. How about mentally. that? We'll go, we'll physically. Go that. We'll go with that. Sure. Cruz, if you went on Survivor... What oh, honest place? It's happening. It's happening. Hey, what Jeff. Place? Hey, Jeff. It's happening. Pick me, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> what place do you honestly think you would finish in? Uh, about, I uh, I don't know if I'd make the merge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm very, uh, I think I could hang okay in challenges. I think I'm a good people person. I think yeah. I'd make good relationships and that's what I'd have to hold on to. Okay. Fair point. Yeah. Um, would you let your wife make a porn for one million dollars? I'd let her make a porn for a free ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 excuse me, like take, the restaurant? Take the million though, Coos. Like, take the million. Yeah, I'll take the million. Yeah, Wait, absolutely. Would you mean, like, free ninety nine, like ninety nine. The restaurant you want, like, free ninety nine for the rest of your life? No, just like free. Yeah, I think it was just a yeah. uh, figure of porno. speech. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I take it, the million. Wait, is it with me or is it with somebody else? Somebody else. Somebody else. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd take the million. Okay. Uh, can I add a part two yeah. to this one? Sure. Coos, uh, would you watch the porn? Oh, mm. yeah, I would. <laughs> have to. Yeah. 
<laughs> it'd be yeah, it'd be like he'd probably be part of it, like when the husband sits in the chair and watches. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just sits there and the eats gig. a lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cruz, would you remove one testicle for the 49ers to win the Super Bowl this year? They're going to win the Super Bowl without me. But if you could guarantee it. You mean like John guaranteeing that the Mets were going to win the World Series when they had won like three games straight at the beginning of the season? Guarantee or. No, like I'm telling you right now, they will win. I'm clipping this shit when the Niners lose. (laughs) If you take your testicle out. Um. Yeah, I've I've already been uh, snipped, so they don't work anyways. I'd give both testicles, really. <laughs> okay, appreciate the honesty. <laughs> Would you wait, wait, hold on. What is this? I don't need a million. I just need four bucks. Uh, I, I'll give you both my testicles. Like He's modifying the gauntlet hey, as we go. The season of giving. I'll do yeah. Wario <laughs> and <is>. Waluigi. <laughs> Yeah, you guys right. said that, you know, I'm so giving. When I sang that song and sent it in, you were like, Koozie's so giving. He just gives, you know, he sings songs and gives us presents. And what a nice guy. What can we give back to him? I haven't mm. seen nothing from you, Blanco, but I'm still giving my testicles mm. and my wife for free. <laughs> I told I told you driving to 104 was just too much to ask today. No, uh, exactly. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. Good grief, man. All right, number nine. We've got two more left. Would you okay. rather get kicked in the balls by a horse or bitten <laughs> by a rattlesnake in the face. You know, this one time I got bitten by the <laughs> rattlesnake. Oh my god! <laughs> this is backfire. What a life! Uh, I have I have been bitten by several snakes, but not a poisonous one, and not in the face. Uh, I'd take the horse kick to the balls. That sounds hot. Kick me! Woo! Yeah. Uh, last question for you too is: What grade would you give Nintendo? 2022. Ooh. Ooh. A C. Wow. Minus. Wow. Okay. I hope Doug's not listening. Hope, I hope he's not. Well, all right. You have survived the gauntlet. Appreciate it, Kevin. Barely. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Now, Hambo, you're not getting off as easy. We have mm. another 10 questions for you. I will say there's a couple repeats because they were just so good that I wanted to keep them in there. That's great. Um, and we're going to start off with the first question. That's the same one. Would you rather have Wario sit on your face or would you give Waluigi a hand job? Mm, I think I'm going to go for the face sit. I feel like there's wow. th- there's a, a defined end to the hand job, whereas the face sit, maybe it's like a quickie. Maybe it's like an it on and off. It would be quick. Maybe You're it's right. a half hour. <laughs> maybe it is. I mean, I don't know. But, you know, hand job, there's a certain ending there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's definitely true. an end in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would you trade your one wheel? for breath of the wild 2 right now yes wow you can't rebuy it this isn't like you just try to stand the system and go back out tomorrow is this breath of the wild 2 being released to everyone or just just handbone gets his own Uh, copy uh, yeah i can brag to everybody i can wait the five months it's fine i have enough other stuff to brag about wow oh but if you streamed (laughs) it If, what if, it was for every, it. if I streamed like, it, the Nintendo gurus no, would come like ninja themselves. Right, into my you're allowed, but you'd be a legend. You're allowed to stream it. <laughs> it's not worth it. I'm not, I'm not looking for that internet clout. Wow, look at this. Selfless guy. Man, what a stud. Yeah. If you <laughs> could add one sport to switch sports, what would it be? Huh, that's a good curling. one. Curling. Curling. Yes. I fucking love curling. There's I think curling would be in. good. You know, jerking the, the Joy-Cons jerking. back and forth. <laughs> I think there's a lot of opportunity there. <laughs> there you is know. a great opportunity there. It, if yeah, you could good. eat only one food for an entire year, what would it be? Ooh. Um, chili. Wow. Chili in a, really? chili, in, chili, would, chili in a bread would, bowl. In a bread bowl? <laughs> chili in a bread bowl. Very specific. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. It would be good. I feel, like, I feel like the bread bowl would round things out. The chili, yeah. I'm getting, you know, uh, the beans, the protein. <laughs> Your Some asshole vegetables might in there. not agree with that. I, it, you know, yeah. it, it's fine. Yeah, I'll make it work. This is just how I'm going to And then, here. And then you sit on Wario's face. Mm, yeah. yeah, retribution, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Would you rather adopt John's cat, Cannoli, or Drew's mm. dog, Goomba? Uh, definitely Drew's dog, Goomba. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, John. I can't yeah. do another cat. I can't do another cat. <laughs> Me neither. If you, if you could meet any celebrity, who would it be? Um, The Rock, so I can smell what he's cooking. (laughs) 
<laughs> you gonna have him sit on your face again? <laughs> I did sit on your face. <laughs> you uh, answered that question like somebody's asked you that every day for the past two years. No, nah, I just confident, man. I'm I'm feeling good. I'm with my my three buddies. Let's let's fucking make it happen, man. Bring on the rock. Yeah. Bring on the face uh, sitting. Let's do it. <laughs> Would you rather get stung by a jellyfish in the balls or mm-hmm. punched in the face by a gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> jellyfish jellyfish ball sting wow Ooh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you know i feel one. like the potential death from the gorilla uh it's jab fair. to the face where, whereas fair. you know that the jellyfish be- ball sting would not feel good at all but um you know i think that's like a tough week or two a tough gorilla week pu- two. yeah g- gorilla <laughs> punched face might be like i'm, I'm down for a year okay, jellyfish, jellyfish thing could be a kink i bet you somebody's got a jellyfish kink yeah Definitely not, not. I'm talking about like a man of war. Well, well, you said jellyfish. Man of war is like also death. Okay, but that's anyways. <laughs> good deal. If you good could feel be good. a professional <laughs> athlete in any sport, what would it be? What sport? Curling. <laughs> <laughs> like an Olympian. Canada? <laughs> no, uh, no. I just think curling is super fun, man. I like the broom, the brooms, and the yelling, and I definitely would want to be on a team that would be like not the U.S. I like the so I can yell. And the yelling, yeah, <laughs> man, come sweep my yell. kitchen and I'll yell at you. That's it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just feel like I wouldn't have to work out. You know, I just get a, a, a you know a good sweep going. You know, you go to the Olympics every four years, be there for you know another, another twenty years. You can curl in like your sixties, man. Wow. Yep. That's Should true. Like figure it yeah. out. All right, two more left. I would have guessed would bowling. You? I would have guessed bowling on that one. Bowl, I, oh yes. Well, after after his display of, yeah, with us, got, he's ashamed. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Hanging would, it up. Would you rather? <laughs> I'm proud of this one. <laughs> I'll let finish. Susie finish drinking. Would you rather <laughs> accidentally shit yourself while having sex, <laughs> or piss your pants during a work meeting? <laughs> Oh man, mm-hmm. pre Zoom culture. I think it's like the the, the the shit myself answer all day. But um, I think Love I'm going to piss myself during the work meeting. I think there is, you know, uh, I, I think I'd be able to navigate myself around. I, I work in HR, so it's like you know, I think no one would really be able to say anything. It would be, <laughs> but you know, not handle it. You are, yeah, HR. exactly. I'm, I'm with the, all people who'd be like, oh, that's fucking weird. But you know, we're not going to say anything to make him feel weirder. Can I can I add something here? This is yeah. a great concept for a video game. You <laughs> piss yourself in a meeting and you have to get back. You have to change your pants without anybody seeing. That sounds like, like really s- fun. Stealth game. Yeah. St- yeah. Stealth game. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be kind of Perfect. fun. I'm glad, glad I <laughs> Secret, Secret pisser. Secret if, pisser. If you shit yourself during sex, I don't think your wife would ever have sex with you again. There would be is too it, much is it like drama, a, is it, drama. Can I ask a question though? Like when you envisioned this question, is it like a, like a plopping like turd or is it like explosive? Like, Hey, Oh my God. Like it's on the wall. <laughs> I feel like yeah. this is one of those Kevin things in like, a, in a trash like you wake up the next morning and you see skid marks and you're like, Oh my God. Like I did, you know, and and then you're going to have to go do the laundry and your wife's going to ask you, why'd you change the sheets? You know, say, well, last night we were having sex. I shit my myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No woman has ever asked why you clean the sheets. <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, I think that's I a no no win. But a good good question though. I okay. like that one. Last one here. What grade would you give yeah. Nintendo for twenty twenty two? C. No, just right. not enough for me. Not enough for yeah. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. All right, guys, you both survived the gauntlet. Thank you for playing. What a, what a pleasure. Very nice. And um, John, back to you, buddy. No Anna Kendrick in those questions. I thought we had a tradition. I feel mm. like we've had enough of her. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We ain't Listen, ever had enough Anakin. Never. No such thing. All right. Let's talk top 10 games of the year. I have been waiting for this. The whole reason why we have you guys here is because we everybody has a different top 10, right? You can't say what the distinct top 10. The Game Awards, you know, will try to tell you Elden Ring is the game of the year. And it's like, yeah, but it's different for everybody. So having one opinion, two opinions, we needed four opinions. We wanted the swath of opinions on Games of the Year. Um, yes. So what we are going to do today is we're all going to go through our top 10 Games of the Year. Here are the rules. Um, your games can be for any system. They don't have to be Switch games. They can be Xbox, PlayStation, Luna, Stadia, whatever you want. 
Um, the games must have come out in 2022 on the console you played it. So if if a game got ported to the Switch in 2022 and you just hadn't played it before, uh, then that counts. But if you did play the game before 2022 and then it came to the Switch, that doesn't count. Okay. Um, we are going to list off our bottom half and then we're going to go through round robin for the top half. That's it. Those are the rules. Any questions? Are we good? Are we set? Are we ready? Good. All right. Who wants to start with their bottom five, top 10 games of the year? What are we going to call these? Top 10, but 10 through six. The worst of the best. Mm, just the tip. All right. I'll just start. Tip. I'm going to start uh, my top 10 games of the year. Number 10 is Infernax. Played that on Switch. Number nine, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Uh, at one point, that was my number one game of the year, but it came out in January. Uh, number eight, As Dusk Falls. Number seven, Elden Ring. Number six, Shovel Knight Dig. Two Shovel Knight games made my list. Wow. Heck yeah. Heck yes. Heck yes. All right, All right. I'll follow you up. That was I number seven? Hmm? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, nope. I thought you I, said that was number seven. Did you do six? What'd you do? Did you do six? In for yeah, shovel, shovel Knight Dig is number two, six. Two Shovel Knights. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, okay, gotcha. Sorry, Drew. Go right ahead. No, you're fine. Number By 10. the way, Drew, Drew, can we see the sheet you're holding? It looks you gotta be quick. Nice. Be quick. It, it looks Call big. It okay. In. All right. It's not as big as I thought. All right. Uh, That's well, what she said. Mm, it's, it's big. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, number 10. RP. G Golf Legends. Hmm. Number nine, Blossom Tales 2. Ooh. Number eight, Road Legacy 2. Ooh. Number seven, Splatoon 3. Hmm. And number six, Inscription. Wow. You have Splatoon Goodbye. 3 at number seven? You never play that. How do you know if I play it or not? Because I like, talk to you every two weeks through my podcast partner. Switch. You I literally tell me what you play every two weeks. I talked to Drewzy about it the other day. I play every Splatfest. It's been like two. Yeah, there was a whole, hey, why are they around only six weeks or I, yeah, whatever? Yeah, because I want them more. Yeah. I want them like every yeah, two he wants weeks. One. He's thirsty, man. Yeah, but you're thirsty. not playing at all between it. Nope, didn't even finish the campaign, but it's fun. Listen, it's not his second game, man. It's number seven. Number seven, yeah. <laughs> Cut this guy <laughs> a break. Thanks, that Hambo. is true. It is It is ahead 100%. of RPG goal. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Give him that for sure. I played right. 56 Nintendo games in 2022, by the way. That's I mean, awesome, it's, man. It's amazing. It is amazing. amazing. All right, Do let's hear it. Go? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, number 10 is a little to the left. Woo! Is that joysticks or porn flicks? <laughs> uh, number nine. Number nine's. I'm going to make a, a substitution here. Number nine is Pokemon <laughs> Violet. Mid change. What was nine? Number eight is Card Shark. Uh, seven is Shredder's Revenge, and six is Shatter Remastered Deluxe. Oh. That's definitely porn. I don't Did know you? if I know that one. I don't know that one either. What, yeah, what's it's kind of like about? Arkanoid. It's kind of like oh, Arkanoid, cool. but uh, yeah, it There's adds more some different elements to it. Yeah, oh, extra awesome. shattering. Like Did fun. you finish? Did you finish Card Shark? Because I don't know. No, I finished the demo, and then I started it when it came out, and I got caught up with something else. But I just love, I loved the story. I liked the gameplay. But if you leave it and then come back to it, you forget all the tricks of the trade and yeah. how to cheat at cards. So you got you to gotta stay on that game to, to remember it. Yeah, I found you can get but screwed I if, you're just, if you're sort of half paying attention, you're zoning out, and then you have to like repeat the trick that they just taught you. Like it's still yep. screw it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. What do you got here? All right. On? All right. So number 10 for me, high on life. I love this game. Super fun. I, I just will say really quick, there's one boss that gives you an achievement mid boss fight. It says spent 15 hours, uh, 15 real life hours in an alien strip club. And then he like jokes at you that, Hey, everyone's going to see this on your friends list. Now you, you freaking weirdo. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, number nine is uh, live alive. 
awesome game. Never played it back in the day. You know, I don't read Japanese, so it was really cool to have that come out this year. Uh, number eight, Nobody Saves the World. Um, I think probably the best soundtrack of the year for me. It was just perfect with that dungeon crawling and everything. Number seven is Horizon Forbidden West. Um, loved Aloy, really cool. I just think the last third of the story kind of rushed it a bit for me, so knocked that down a few pegs. Uh, and number six, Cuphead, delicious, delicious last course. Um, loved this game. Miss Chalice was super fun. Um, probably would have been higher if this was Cuphead too, and not just the DLC. That's a fair point. Great point. I almost had that on my list too. Did not make my list. Um, what was your number nine again? Oh no, 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 your number ten. I was actually thinking High on Life could make it to your number one. I'm a little, I'm a little no, surprised. It was no, no, it's but... not that good of a game. But, okay, uh, it was super fun. It, 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 it deserves a spot here for me. Yeah, you're, you're kind of the only one I know who's just like loving, like going through the game. I don't know. I, I think another couple of people have tried it, but like they haven't gotten that much. But you've just been like crushing it. You've got to really be into that kind of dark humor, wit, fourth wall breaking stuff. If you're not, it's oh, not it's hilarious for you. But yeah, I, yeah I've enjoyed I've, the clips. <laughs> I've sent you guys some funny clips, so yeah. there's. Th- it's enjoyable. Sweet. All right. So now we're left with our top fives. So we get a little more in depth on this one. I am very curious now that high in life is off the board. Uh, what you guys are all going to pick here. Um, mm-hmm. Who wants to start? I can start if we want to start. Sure. Do the same order. I will start my number five game of the year. Um, started off a little disappointing, but ended up high on this list. A Plague Tale Requiem. Um, I had played the first game and loved it, but this game kind of started off with a little stodgy. Um, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, we're home. You need to go get this flower, right? Like how many games do you play where you have to go get this like flower to, to save your, your brother or whatever. Um, and then you go and then you come back and then she's like, okay, you need to go and find this person and tell them to come back. It was like, oh my goodness. Uh, but after a few hours of that, then you kind of go out on your adventure and I had a really good time with it. Uh, a couple little issues with it that kind of sunk it down to the number five spot. But overall, these games have been great. And uh, this game was uh, really good. I really, John, I really enjoyed it. Believe it or not, I know all about this game because I listened to your Edspots diary. That is right. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, I covered it Look in at three me. or two. Yeah. Look at you. No, it was. Yeah, I think it was my second one. No, it was really good. I, I And I would never encourage anyone to play this game unless they've played the first one. This is not one of those games where you don't need to. You should play the first one first. Um, I'm definitely going to come back to them someday. I want to play through them both again down the road. But hmm. um, yeah, really good. And I played it on Game Pass, so didn't have to pay for it. Um, but yeah, that's my number five. Nice. My number five has already been mentioned this evening, and I'm going with Nobody Saves the World. Mm. This game, I loved, loved, loved this game. It sucked me in so hard. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it, it oh. was just, it was so different and unique. And it's one of those games that, makes you want to unlock things to go try them out even if they yeah. suck and you use them for like 30 seconds like a spell or a move or a character you still have that like i, I hate to say it i gotta collect them all type concept right it's it's it was fantastic it was a lot of fun the dungeon crawling there was parts that felt like a little repetitive i think certain dungeons that just yeah. were like this is stupid the the the, the, the big i got your moment in that dungeon but uh overall i think this the the different characters made that game so much fun. I, I, sad to say, has anyone even played the DLC? I have not. I, 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 so I booted it up to try to go play the DLC, but I was in my save was in the middle of the last dungeon. And I think uh, I was just I couldn't back myself out. So I wanted to try it out, but I got to look into cool. it. I think it's two new characters and like a whole winter type uh, like dungeon or two or something like that. I think it's right. Isn't it called something winter? I don't even know. I don't know. Anyways, I love the game. A lot of fun. That's that's my number five. I my big memory of that game was how beautiful it looked on OLED um, because I I think Mm. it came out not too long after. Very colorful. It's a gorgeous looking game. The one thing that dragged that game down for me so it didn't end up on my list was it had that sort of it's the same thing that happened to Elden Ring and happens to the Dark Souls games. You start off and you're trying to fight your way through the dungeons and you die and then you die and you die. And eventually you just realize I can just run past everybody. And you just run, run, run until you get to a checkpoint and then you die and then you start from that checkpoint and then you run, 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 run. And so like by the end of that game, the dungeons were, you know, so manic and everything. I was just running through to just try to get to the checkpoints. That's Sounds all. Like a cheater. <laughs> I agree with you, though. All the questing was so much fun. You wanted to like 
check all the boxes, even if you're using some mm-hmm. crazy weapon combination just mm-hmm. to, you know, get something done. Um, but it was good. It was, it was, it was very good. Who's up? Uh, oh, me. Who's? Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, my number five is freshly frosted. I've already talked about it once. I love this game, man. I'm hooked on it. I don't know. I just can't stop uh, playing it. I'm. You work through twelve boxes of donuts. I'm on number ten. So this I'm, is your I'm making it. Five game. The donut. Yeah, game? it is. Oh, don't it's, you yeah. start, Drew? It's don't really you even good, start? Man. It's very chill and zen. I gotta look it up. What and frosted? What? It, Freshly frosted. Freshly frosted. And let me give you a little sneak peek. It's going to come up later on one of my lists as well. Let me tell you. But it, uh, uh, oh, yeah. There's a very soothing voice, very ASMA, uh, ASMR yeah. type of uh, situation going on there. Mm-hmm. This game. Tells you, a little you, guys make, you guys make fun of me for playing it's shitty a, games. It's a puzzle game, man. It's a puzzle game. A... It's fun. I don't make, make fun donuts. of you. I appreciate that, Cruz. You don't. No, I make fun I'm, of you, Drew. I'm happy you play shitty <laughs> games. I got a whole list of them if you want to talk about them later. Awesome. That's it. Yeah. Freshly Frosted. It's awesome. If you, I mean, you can go watch some clips of it on YouTube or whatever. Will that make you want to play it? Probably not. But when you're actually playing it, it's fun. It's really fun. It's addicting. It's it's a great game. There, there's something like a dopamine hit when you've got it all set up right and it's doing its yeah. little music and it's and it's flopping the, the frosting and the sprinkles on it and it's all moving together and you're just grooving. It's a good time. I might play it. Kevin, uh, where can you play this one and how much is it? It is on the Nintendo Switch. I'm sure it's on other consoles as it's well. It's like ten bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's like I have 10, no idea it what like it cost. Okay, I, it's it's yeah. worth. It's it. a good one. If you liked uh, a little to the left, I think you probably like this one too. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. definitely play it down the road. I can't believe I said that, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it is on Luna know. as well. It's very much on Luna. <laughs> free free on Luna. What, what one of the top games on Luna? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number five for 2022 is Mario plus Rabbids sparks of hope. I love hey. this game. hundred percent of this bad boy. You did. Uh, I did. I think the addition of the sparks was super fun. Um, how they opened up the traversal and sort of like the, the level design, letting you explore a little bit more, or maybe not explore, but like, you know, spread yourself out um, and not be sort of defined uh, or limited to that grid system. I think I was, oh, that's pretty much what I was most nervous about with this one. But I think they hit it out of the park. Super fun. Um, I really liked how the overworld puzzles were. Um, there was more to it this time than compared mm-hmm. to uh, uh, Kingdom Battle. Um, but I, I fucking hate Beepo, man. Beepo is the worst. Beepo sucks. Agreed. But uh, overall, great game. I, I agree. I think you hit on it there was the, the, the overworld puzzles. Um, I don't think it was like, over the top. I, it was the perfect length between all the five worlds. Like I wanted to keep doing the puzzles all the way through yeah. world five. It never did to the point like this is I'm not doing this for whatever reason. It was you wanted to do the puzzles and they were all kind of unique and different. Yeah, it wasn't just like hitting switches that were the mm. different shapes like in Kingdom Battle. There was definitely more to it. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I, I, I agree. Cool. You guys cool. did nothing on it. Nothing. I've got something to say about it, but I'll wait till later. <laughs> All righty. Number four. Um, my number four game of the year and um, a little bit of a spoiler here. This becomes my number one switch game of the year. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Mm. Number four on the year. This is actually my favorite switch game of the year. And um um, I think one of Nintendo's few hits this year, um, the few game, one of the few games that actually landed. Um, I've got some things to say about other Nintendo games, but I am not a Kirby super fan. I think I've only played through um, Star Allies might be the only Kirby game that I played through. I have a bunch of them because uh, my kids like Kirby. Um, they don't play it anymore, but they, they like Kirby games. So I have like Robotron and some other ones I want to play. But this is only like the second Kirby game I've ever played through. And I loved um, I think when I, we first saw the trailers, I said, this is Mario Odyssey sequel. Like we 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 never got the Odyssey sequel. And I said, you know, Nintendo, I think, just handed the Odyssey engine over to Hal and they just made this sequel. Um, the levels were all super creative and fun. And then, you know, you have all those collectibles and things you want to do to 100 percent. And they were always really just fun to do and find. 
Um, they, and I think the way they did it, if I remember right, is you went through the level once and then you might get some hints on what it is you need to do. But as you're going through the level, it was very intuitive to figure out oh, what's some weird thing I can do to try to, you know, knock an achievement out or something like that. And I played through this game. I started playing it when we did our road trip to Disneyland um, during the summer. I was late to it. And oh, man, I played through the whole thing. I was 100 percenting the world's absolutely loved it. I would love to see some DLC on this. I don't think we'll get it, but um, absolutely loved it. My favorite my favorite Switch game of the year. And and if they make a sequel to this, I even better. Kirby, Kirby and another Forgotten Land. <laughs> uh, remembered Land. <laughs> yeah, you you were a little late to it because your family was playing it first, right? Yeah, yeah. My wife yeah, played so it. You, my you son had to wait played on the it. Copy to trickle down to you. Yeah. yeah. And then by the time I, I could play it, I was like kind of there was other stuff out and, and you know, I wasn't in the hype cycle. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't regret it at all. Yeah. Nice. All right. My number four is a game that made me, God, I hate to say it, kind of fall in love with the series. Pokemon Violet. I I became like, wow, like really into I don't want to say really into it, but like I am a you can now call me a Pokemon fan. Where if you asked me a year or two ago, it wow. was I probably couldn't name five Pokemon. Um, I I think it's also cool that my my son has become obsessed with this the whole Pokemon concept. So it's it, it kind of fun to like have him watch me and see it through him and him want to play and we kind of play together and work through it. Um, but overall, this game itself just just works for me. Um. You know, I don't really care about the graphical errors and shit like that, so it didn't bother me. I mean, I don't think the update came until I was pretty much done with the game, so that didn't really impact me. But overall, this game was so much fun. So mm-hmm. I, I've, I've talked about it multiple times in the past episodes on the, the, the few flaws it's had, but um, this game sold me as a Pokemon fan. I'm thinking about now going back even and playing like Arceus um, and probably will pick up the next Pokemon game. I think, you know what it is for me? I think I really like where the series is now going with this more of an open world type concept where, yeah, like I tried, um, what was the other one? What was the last, like, um, Arceus or no, uh, Pearl, Pearl, uh, Pearl, Pearl and Diamond. And Diamond. Yeah. I hated that game. Like I, I, like I, I played Pokemon Let's Go, loved it. And I became this, I was like, I love Pokemon. And then I played that one and I hated it and I didn't even finish it. And then I said, I guess I'll try this one again. It looks a little different. And like, I'm back in, baby. I'm all in. Um, I'll probably play them going forward. It um, sold it for me. Really enjoyed it. That's awesome. That's great. I'm only like two or three hours in. That's why it's number nine for me and would probably move up. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I yeah, that's awesome that it hits you like that. It I did. think it being open world definitely attracts more people to that game. It yeah. attracted me more for sure. Absolutely. Welcome to the club, pal. <laughs> oh, I'm number four. My number four is Kirby, too. Look at us, John. Let's hold hands and skip through the Kirby Forgotten Land together. Yay! <laughs> uh, the only thing I have to add that you didn't was, as far as the Odyssey, Odyssey comparison, is that I feel like it really got that to where the game is accessible early on, especially to any kind of players. Um, <clears throat> but then the further you get on in the game, like that game gets hard. Like Odyssey does with the dark worlds and, you know, the further you go on the Kirby, it, it can get tough. That last boss was tricky. And then some of the post game stuff. So, yeah, the yeah. challenges and, you have to do where you have to, sure. you got to beat bosses without getting hit. And yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's, that's quintessential that's Nintendo, though. Like getting through the game is doable, but they give you enough if you want a bigger challenge. Yep. Mm. Nice. All right. Uh, number four for me, uh, The Last of Us Part One. I'm going to include the uh, Left Behind DLC that was packaged in with that game because I uh, really think it rounded out the story very nice uh, at the end of the normal kind of game playthrough. Um, talked about it before, but uh, didn't play the original one back on PS3, and I missed the the remaster on PS4. So this is my first go at it. Awesome game, Naughty Dog, or it's completely brilliant. Uh, the voice acting, the characters. I hate fucking zombies, and I love this game. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, just, I can't say enough good things about this one. <laughs> Super fun. It's great. I mean, just a reminder, Naughty Dog makes The Last of Us and Uncharted. 
Yeah. Wow. I ballers. mean, like, what pedigree? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And Super Crash fun. Bandicoot. And Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> and Way of the Warrior. <laughs> cool. This is a deserving one to be on the list. I actually didn't include it on my list. Because yeah. it wasn't the first time I played it. I, I just didn't feel like it was fair. Um, but this is the first it, time you've played it. So first time for me. Yeah, deserve definitely yeah. deserved a spot on it. Super, super cool. Um, I'm a big Uncharted fan. But um, yeah, I think what they did with the character development in The Last of Us and, and sort of the story you go on and, and how you, you come to get acquainted with with Joel and Ellie. It just um, it, it's really unique and, and amazing. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Part two yeah. is in your future. That's it. Mm hmm. All right, that's the end of four. Number three, game of the year. It kind of surprises myself. I put into this list together and, you know, you just kind of you kind of rank way. Well, I like this better than that. I like this better than that. This one is one that floated to the top and stayed there. And I was quite shocked. Uh, Stray. The cat. Yeah. Game. The cat um, Stray game. is my number three. Um was really awesome that they put this on PS plus. So, you know, I never had to buy it. Um, It was a game that we didn't see much (laughs) of. It was in the PS five showcase, but we didn't see much of it. And um, it was just way, it was way more expansive. I think than anyone had any reason to think. And um, it was a perfect little adventure. It was the perfect um, length of a game. And it was one of those games that is when, you know, when a game is really good, as soon as you finish the game, you want to play it again. And uh, like literally, as soon as I finished this game, I started another save file. I wanted to see some of the earlier scenes again. I started trying to pop the achievements. And um, yeah, it's just it's clean and polished and fun. And there's a there's a story in there that's not super. Um, a good part of the story is told to you and it's simple. But then there's a whole part of the story where it isn't so clear and you have to kind of pay attention and I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, everything was perfect about it. The, the everything, the story, the the gameplay, everything. So I mean, yeah, I was surprised, but that is my number three. And Drew said that you had to be. His theory was you had to be a cat person to like this game. That was. I did say that. That helps. I'm sure. <laughs> it helps. It, it it probably helps, but I don't think you need to be a cat person to love right. this game. Listen, um, if it was a dog, I feel like I'd be more into it. Yeah, I, th- I think the point is that you're like you can't interact v- verbally with the world there. Mm. And if the story kind of has to you you have to experience the story as versus like being part of it. So it's it's you're like injected into that world as a cat. But, but would it be Do- as cool if it was like a rat or a mouse? I don't think so, because I think yeah, uh, it, it, it leans on some of the cat stuff, like yeah, knocking over that. things and, and mm-hmm. whatnot. But yeah, yeah, I, mean, See, I, I wouldn't get that. I don't have a cat. All right. I wouldn't understand. I'm, I mean, there's like a meow Niche. button, which is great. Yeah. But yeah. Stupid. Fun game. Anyways, I, you're trying to say that you would like this game if it was a little more doggy style. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> All right. My number three, we already talked about it, but Mario and Rabbids, Sparks of Hope. Uh, Handbone mentioned it. You know, I, I, I agree with you what you said. The the battle system with this no grid was, was definitely interesting. I think it made it a lot more fun. Um, there was definitely parts in the game, though. I did feel like overpowered <laughs> in a weird way. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like, 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 mm-hmm. like, like you could you could win a battle without even having the other team attack. But yeah, not to talk about the negatives. Yep. Overall, though, the game felt fun. Um, it was it was like I said earlier. I wanted to explore it. I wanted to see everything. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Martin Rabbit, Sparks of Hope. My number three. Awesome. Twos, on to you. That's great. <clears throat> My number three is Spider Heck. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I want to look this one up. Uh, this game is the best multiplayer game that come out that has come out this year that nobody knows about. That's a f- it is so what? much fun. There is no story. The graphics are very minimal, but the gameplay is so addicting and so fun. It's called Spider Heck. Heck, is this on really Spider? Good. You're a, yeah, it's on Switch. I played it on Game Pass, then I bought it on Switch. What am I looking There's at here? Spider and the random weapons you get, and you have to fight each other as spiders. <sighs> Google it. 
I'm YouTube looking it. at it already. It yeah, you, you were telling so us. You said fun. you played it with your family. Yeah, so really it is fun. so fun. It's so addicting. It's how how such long a are the match? Game. It matches like in, in and out. It in like a couple minutes. If you're if your spider's good with a lightsaber and my spider's good with a lightsaber, we might play for ten <laughs> you, you, minutes. You have so playing me, swords for a little can bit. Can you play this solo? I don't know. I've only played <laughs> multiplayer. <laughs> It's this still number three this, on my list. There's no story. There's I haven't. No, I haven't. Dip, no, I haven't deep listen, deep dove into this. Can we rewind for a second? This is your <laughs> third best video game period that you played in this year. Hey man, yeah. you have fun with your family. It's gonna. Do I'm not, it. It's a blast. Just to be sure video games that. for me are all about having fun. It's not about Absolutely. the graphics. It's not about the story. If I play a game and I have fun with it, it could be number one. Hey, I might move Spider Heck to number one if you want to test me, Drew. Listen, you're talking to a guy that has the same passion and feel, Cruz. You know me. I don't give a right, shit about buddy. that other That's stuff. right, buddy. I know you do. I know. You'll play That's the right. games. Try Spider Heck with the family. I'm got, you know what? Hell, I'm going to have to go for it now. I'm going to see how much it is. Yeah. Heck, 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 you're going to have to deal for it. Let's see. Yeah. Spider, you guys are on this. Like my Hambone looks at it. Oh, like Hambone talks about his. Yeah. Yep. All right. We good on Spider Heck? If, if Hambone <laughs> says Spider Heck right now. <laughs> Fifteen dollars <laughs> worth every penny. Every I like I'd pay thirty. Uh, top bucks, three, top away. three rated game of the year. How can it not be worth fifteen dollars? Hell yeah, right. Hambone. That's it, man. Got to support my boy. All right, number number three for me. <laughs> Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> You fuckers didn't play this game with me. I can't believe I couldn't get it. one of you guys to play Cult yeah. of the Land with me. It's on every something. it's on every system. It's got one of the most satisfying gameplay loops um that I've experienced this year. You're this little sadistic lamb. You go around, you have your village, you clean up the poop, you name your villagers whatever you want. I think I had five Zablocks. I was up to like seven seven Drews. I will say I was very upset when my first Bob Cousy died. Uh, oh. he, he original OG Bob Cousy was around until like Drew five. It was insane. You just <laughs> oh, you just yeah. like would not give up. Eventually in that game, um, so you 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 recruit the villagers and they live for a, a, a different period of time uh, to base off their like RNG type traits. Uh, and how you treat them. If you don't clean up the poop soon enough, then maybe, you know, they'll pass a little earlier. But, you know, elderly That's Bob Cousy was just... That's why he went through sevens of He was living Basically, I just let him <laughs> eat, eat, eat his own shit. It was perfect. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you were walking around with your little cane. I just, like, checked on you from time to time. Like, Cousy's still kicking it. And then one day, I came back from from a mission, and then th- there was your cold dead body. And uh, I had to oh. put you... had to bury you. But no, guys, R. this R. game was fucking awesome. Like it's so good. Please go if you see it on sale. Go pick it up. I, I, I debated putting it higher on my list, but I don't think I had some of those technical issues. Um, I didn't give a shit. I played the the, the fuck out of this game. It was awesome. Oh, how long did land. you play this for? Go this ahead. is like uh, this is like a to complete it end to end, do all the achievements and everything was like twenty five hours. And and there is like a story. There is an end. There is an end. <laughs> There is an end, like Spider Egg. So, so it's it's roguelike, and there's four different areas you have to go through and, and beat these four bosses. Um, and at the end, there's like a big boss, um, and there's some closure to the story as well. But you can keep playing and, and whatever. You have to maintain your cult, you know. Do you maintain your cult anymore? Do you go, do you pop no, back I in? Uh, if I play it again, I'll start a new playthrough. Hmm. So can they add some? They've added some stuff lately too, right? They they keep putting out DLC, and that's what I'll say about the the developers, Massive Monster. They had an awesome social media um, sort of approach with this game, with their little mm-hmm. lamb, and you see him. Yeah, the lamb was at the Game Awards, and the lamb like was dressed up for Halloween, and they did a whole thing about like cosplay is your best lamb. It, it just it was fucking awesome. Just play Cult of the Lamb, please, God, just do it. <laughs> okay. Now, before you were hyped for this game, when they announced it, before it even came out, you were just like, you jumped off a bridge and said, Cult of the Lamb, I'm joining the cult. Yeah. When this game came out, it did it live up to your hype? Yeah, absolutely did. It absolutely did. Because awesome. I think the, the, the trailer did a great job about telling you what this game was going to be, right? This wasn't this huge epic. This was just yeah. sort of uh, dark humor, a little bit silly, a little bit sadistic uh, type of game. Um yeah, man, Devolver Digital Digital is 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 awesome. So that's sweet. Awesome. I'm waiting for the, the physical version comes out in spring. I'm definitely gonna play it. But yeah, like yeah. I, I kept hearing about 
glitches we were hearing about it like a, from nick and it just kept yeah. spooking me off i yeah i think the switch version is still a little buggy but whatever it's it's that good work through the bugs it's awesome time if you can work through the bugs in pokemon play cult of the land which i don't <laughs> you're a special case john so yeah. needy john you're so needy drew will drew will do it i will i have it on my list i still don't play the skull slayer that you recommend uh play cult of the lamb over skull okay cult of the lamb's way better you got it so it's, it's already it's actually already on my wish list oh very nice and spider right. hill all right, Spider-Hack. Jack, tell us about your number two. <laughs> Spider-Hack. <laughs> uh, my number two is Horizon Forbidden West. Um, this was one of the biggest reasons why I got a jump back into PS5 back in February. Um, I, I got my PS5 a week before this game came out because I I was joining the hype train on it and I, I was excited to play it and then play the first one again. Um, this is like one of those wow games when you get a new console, right? Uh um, this was just a wow. Um, the, the visuals are are great. And it's not just like, oh, it has great graphics. But <clears throat> when you're telling a story, sometimes those visuals can really pull you into that story. And so like some scenes in gaming, I'll never forget. And one of them is from Horizon Forbidden West when you take the little trolley and you kind of take it down into the valley and in the kind of near the beginning of the game. And just, just like a breathtaking view. And it's such a long trolley ride <laughs> down and you're just like, I can't wait to like jump into this madness. And you get down there and that's where the open world begins. Um, just kind of a great thing. Uh, one of those games, this was the game I played the most on my PS5. I hit 100 hours on it. Um, but one of those games too, where if you try to 100% it, you can get a little sick of it. So I was going around just trying to do every freaking side quest in this game. And it is a massive world. And it took a long time. Um, but it's one of the only, I think it's the only might be the only PlayStation game I've platinumed. Um, I might have done maybe like a like a Life is Strange thing or whatever, but but like the, the only action adventure type game that I've I think I've ever platinumed. Um, and I love it. And, and so I'm psyched up for the DLC that's coming out uh, next year. And uh, yeah, nothing more I can say about it. It was for a long time my game of the year, um, but thoroughly enjoyed it. And then it inspired me eventually to go back to Horizon Zero Dawn. And I kind of 100 percented that, too. So uh, great series. Looking forward to the third game. Looking forward to the DLC. If I were to mainline that game, how long would it take me? You know, I tried to mainline the first game and um, I, I got to a point where I just couldn't beat the monsters anymore. So I would say that probably with this game too, mainlining may not be a good idea. Um, you might hit a difficulty spike. Up? Yeah, unless you play it on yeah. an easier mode, um, you want to okay. side quest it. But the side quests are so fun. Um, you know, just I would do do some side quests. But yeah, I would say it's probably like 40 hours or something. It's just one of those games where it's not super long, but it's not super short. But you can make it super long if you try to do everything. You, you can get out of there under, in under 40 hours for sure. Yeah. Okay. They have good accessibility options too. So if you're just there for the story, turn down the difficulty. You won't ever really mm -hmm. have a problem with the uh, with the enemies. So you probably can get through there in 20 to 30 hours if you do that. Yeah, and I'll be honest, they do a good job of summarizing the first game right at the beginning, just right in the game. They have this like it was like a seven, right, a seven or eight minute sequence where they were retelling the story of the first game. Very oh, cinematic, cool. very cool. Um, and then I had played the previous game like I don't know a year before or something. And I forgot all the characters. I knew Aloy, but like Varl and like them, like I didn't even remember them. There were people in the game that I just didn't even recall. Uh, and then when I played the first game again, I was like, oh, there's that guy. Oh, you know, there's that guy. But um, yeah, this is a game you don't have to have played the first game, but I would recommend it. That's all I'll say. Learning Aloy's origin story is kind of important to it all. Um, so I would recommend okay. playing the first game first, but you don't have to. All right. First game, by the way, is on PS Plus. So oh, if you don't have it, how many times are you going to? No, I'm just saying is if you want to go buy Forbidden West, right, I'll you, allow can, it. You're right. you can play it for free on the first game on PS Plus. It's, it's and then play not the free. Game. It's not free. Well, it's not free, but <laughs> included can... on PS Plus. You can play it on PS Plus. It's included on PS Plus. If you happen to purchase included. PS Plus, it's also included on the PS Plus. <laughs> yes, exactly. There PS Plus. Okay. How much is PS Plus? 
<laughs> it's like a 25 percent off on Black Friday. Oh, yeah. that's in the past, PS Plus Extra is like a hundred dollars for the year. It's actually yeah, a really like good a, price. It's a hundred. What's up with the, the plus? Can, can we agree? Why does everyone have to know what the plus concept? One I, one who went with plus. Uh, Discovery Plus? I think was the first. No, one. I thought it was Disney. Was it Disney Plus? I don't know. Uh, no, we've definitely had Plus before. That we have I Apple TV Plus too. Plus is after. like I don't know, man. Plus, plus, it, it feels like, like you're calling them like man. oversized, like big yeah, and tall, like super, like, super size. It plus, plus, maybe sized. the maybe the next Switch will be Nintendo Switch Plus. Yeah, maybe definitely. My right, number you heard two. It here first. <laughs> you heard it there first. Number two game of 2022, Mario Strikers Battle Lead. Now, does yeah. this game have its flaws? It might, but this is probably hands down the most fun I've had in a game all year. It truly is. Um, it 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 lived up to its hype train for me big time. I have a hundred and five hundred and ten hours in this game. Ooh. Um, I love it. I mean, was the campaign a little disappointing? Sure. Did did they kind of break the online concept? Sure. But which online game doesn't get broken at some point? Right. It's 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 unavoidable. But I like I said, I jumped back on this game. I played the shit out of this game. I played with my wife. My kids watch. It's just, um, it's great. They gave us three free updates, six new characters, like five new stadiums. Um, it's great. It, it, uh, really fun. Like I said, I wish the online mode could have been a little bit. Um, I think they actually did a good job, right? We talked about the clubs that they did. Was it perfect? No, but I mean, when we first started and we had all these guys in our club, it was kind of fun. It was kind of cool. You could vote on what stuff you wanted to upgrade. You could see the stats of everybody in your club. It's actually structured pretty well um, if you have people that are actually playing the game and you can see it. So I thought it was great. Uh, I thought they tried to reach outside of the box and make it the online game that they were hoping for, for the competitiveness. And I think it was there for a good couple months. And I think it's just like any unfortunately mario sports game or any online any online game really in general most online games it fizzles out over time right because something new and shiny comes along um you know you play now online and it, it is you play a lot of the same people you'll notice it and it gets a little a little bit like that but i still love this game i wish it was more offline type concept or modes but um strikers battle league is a big win for me this year I, awesome. I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I feel like Nintendo just didn't go all in with the online play, right? We noticed it right away. The mm. The first season didn't start for like a week yeah, or 10 weird. days or something. And I get it. They didn't want it like they wanted to get, you know, they get in people's hands, let people play and practice before they go. But it was a weird thing to to make everyone wait 10 days before getting into it. There was people that were done with the game before this. The first season yeah. even began. Um. And then, yeah, like we didn't get a lot of new items like we, we all bought items pretty quickly and then it was done. There was nothing creative. There was nothing that changed your character in any way. It was just all of the items in the game will upgrade a stat or two and then downgrade a stat or two. It's just a math game, you know, a formula sort yeah. of thing. And it it's is. like I would have loved a here's a special, you know, boot that costs a ton of money that, you know, I understand it's like pay to win, but it's it's not with money. Right. It's just by playing. Yeah. And, you know, here's a special boot that gives you, like, a special ability. That would be fun. I don't know. And even, even the seasons things, they had the idea and concept to do, like, every season, like, limited items or something. They didn't really reach outside of the bots with that. Mm -hmm. It was like they had this idea, but they didn't really capitalize on it. Yeah, every you tournament know? was, like, normal, normal, mm -hmm. normal, normal. <laughs> it was like, Too bad they didn't have outfits, John. You know, you know, you know, you love a good outfit. I mean, I they should have rotated outfits the way Switch Sports did. Mm -hmm. Like, that would have been Santa fun. Santa hats. Yeah, and Everyone I... Everyone Santa hats. I really enjoyed the game, but it just got repetitive and there just was no incentive anymore besides just like I would that, play matches yeah. just to get points for well, our league. Correct. Right. They had these achievements that you could get coins and stuff every season, but like you didn't need the coins. They didn't like. Right. You didn't need to buy the <laughs> armor. They were, they were giving you way too much. So, again, great ideas, great concept, but they didn't really hit the mark on it. Right. Yeah. But still a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. fun. Mm hmm. I have an audio quote from Drew on uh -oh. this game. I don't Can't know how wait. it'll sound. Will it sound wow. good coming from yeah, my phone? Let's try. It'll mine? sound good enough. Yeah. Let's Hold see. it real close. Let's see. Why this does is, he have this? Yeah. Why does he this have is this? What, it's a cool special. <laughs> this was going to be on my, uh, this is going to be an audio portion of my game later, but 
for Fits now it's here. gonna play here uh this is drew describing strikers in episode 109 <laughs> september 27th it's like saying that you like hook up with a hooker like what i mean by that is the excitement of like hooking up with this maybe hot chick big tits the thrill the lead up the excitement it's fantastic sets but then after it it's like immediate regret and like you're probably never gonna go back to that hooker <laughs> that was it listen that's, that's the, the, those are your thoughts on strike went, back, went <laughs> back to the hooker listen that's fine. Me, did. he did let me, let me, let me exaggerate on that right because this is that's what happened as time goes on in life you always go back to that hooker. It's like you had it once in your life, and it was a fantastic time. And you're like, fuck, I'm never doing that again. And then as time goes on, you're like, I miss it. And you mm-hmm. go back. We've yeah, all been there with something in our life. And that, yep. for me, that hooker was Mario Strikers. So I appreciate that. Nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, I went back. I went back to the hooker. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not mad at you. I just thought that was. Do I really uh, talk that fast, or was that on like one and a half? I think that, that, I was, think that, on, was, like that was one, that was a 1. little bit. Okay, I just wanted to yeah. make sure. <laughs> yeah, one point two five. Damn yeah. New Englander. Thank you, Drew. Well done. Good quote there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my number two is uh, Cuphead Delicious Last Course. Wow. Woo! Fun in- yeah. insider fact on that: the the COVID was running through my household when that came out, so I got to stay quarantined in a bedroom with that game for days and ended up winning the monthly mayhem Highlight. because that's I just laid in bed and that's all I played for a week straight. So, mm. oh uh, what a fucking fantastic! I love the original Cuphead. This DLC was just fucking fantastic, piled right on top of it. I mean, mm-hmm. it took forever to come out later. <laughs> uh, I just bought the physical copy the other day just just to have. I might not even open it, but it has everything included in it. It looks pretty on my shelf. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic game. Special. Mm. Chalice almost got my hottest character of the game uh, of the year, but she <laughs> did yeah, not make wrong the with cut. That, man. I, I what do you mean argue. almost? I could not argue. Almost. She, I, listen, there wasn't a lot of characters that came out, and Chalice was on, was was in consideration. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what was weird about the DLC to me is like you said, Goose. It, it took like three years to come out. Yeah, and I, I remember I was so hyped for it for so long, and then by the time it came out, it was like you don't have your muscle memory anymore. I didn't even remember how to play the game. So in, mm, it was like yep. a painful first, like half hour, just getting it. I didn't know how to parry. Um, like I, like I saw the pink stuff and I mm. was like, Oh, what do I do with that? Like I couldn't remember how to do it. Um, so mm. that was kind of painful. I had to look at the controls, but the thing I loved about it was it was completely separate from the other game. It was completely standalone. So you go to this Island and all the collectibles are new. Everything was new. It wasn't mixed yeah. in with your previous yeah. gameplay, and I love that. It was really good. I, and it was I, eight bucks. Yeah, eight yeah. Bucks. yeah, that's a steal. That was a steal. Awesome. They could have yeah. easily charged at least fifteen or twenty. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. easily. Yeah, mm-hmm. jo- John, I think you had a good point there about like you know muscle memory lost and all that stuff. But I think that that was so great about um, them adding this chalice. Like the the parrying yeah. was totally different. There was that little, um, I'll call it a little tutorial stage on how you do the pairing and get a little power up or whatever that was, or maybe it was a coin or something like that. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think having her as that new playable character helped to maybe bridge that gap a little bit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what? You okay over there? That, this is the second time he cracked up, and I don't know what he cracked up about. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's listening to a podcast. No, I'm good. Maybe. I'm good. You guys are fantastic. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> awesome <laughs> all, all right hambone right, my number two god of war ragnarok Ooh, uh, yeah. yes. this game freaking rocked man uh i couldn't put it down this just like cult of the lamb i think uh was one of those games where like w- once it came out that's all i played until i was done with it um i i juiced the the crap out of this orange um left nothing in there um did everything um Awesome story. Uh, Kratos um, is is one of my favorite PlayStation characters now. Uh, really uh, seeing his journey and and all his little, um, you know, friends and and uh, you know people that were like kind of going along that journey with him um, and how their stories developed and everything. Freaking great! Um, again, somebody please play this uh, so that I can talk to you about it. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but amazing game. I think I'm going to play it over Christmas break. 
do it nice. do it and, and i will mention yeah, yeah. similar to what john mentioned about um uh forbidden west um there's like a little 15 minute 10 minute trailer in the front of it that you can watch so if you didn't play all of god of war 2018 or you did and you forgot about it there's a little like refresher trailer you can watch so awesome game yeah dude i just I played play god of war and i still don't remember the story <laughs> yeah right yeah yeah nice. i know it's pretty I know that oh, that game's beautiful. Yeah. What's it a true game? If I could play it. Ah, oh, dude, you'd love that. The high fantasy, yeah. right up your alley. Mm-hmm. Fantasy, yeah. little hack and slash, little strategy built yeah. into. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Need that in my life. <laughs> maybe the maybe it'll come up on the Luna. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, let's go to our number one. John, it'd be you. Oh. Oh, I'm yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> Number one game of the year uh, yes. for me is uh, easily the quarry. Um, oh. it, I honestly, um, when I saw the trailer, I was like, I'm going to really enjoy this. And then I played the demo. Um, and I think on a, a past episode, I said it's the best demo I ever played. I had so much fun with the demo that I immediately had Michelle play the demo. And then um, I think I told you guys, I said, this is game of the year potential. I hadn't played it yet. You hear it all the time, right? This game's game of the year potential, potential. And it ends up being game of the year. Um, It's a narrative game from Supermassive Games. Um, They made... um, uh, God, I I didn't play... uh, The uh, Dark Pictures games, right? Yeah, but they did something before that that's really well known that I did not play. Can't be that well Um, known. But um, yeah, like I've, I never played a game by them, but I love narrative games. And um, yeah, this is about the camp counselors and there's some shit that's going down and you play uh, from the perspective of all of them. It just kind of takes turns uh, depending on the part of the story and all of the cancel- counselors can die or live. So there's so much variance. And, and if you play multiple times, you'll get different scenes that you didn't get before, which is always great in a narrative game. Um, I had that happen with As Dusk Falls as well, which I had as my number eight. Um, but it's like it had this 80s vibe going on, like an 80s slasher vibe. Um, the motion capture performance is really good. And like I said, in a narrative game, sometimes having good graphics and animation really is important because it pulls you into the story much like a movie would. Um, but it was another game where as, as soon as I finished, I immediately wanted to start another run. And... Um, I've played through the game completely twice. It's going to be my Halloween month, you know, annual sort of playthrough now. Um, I can't say enough good things, but like if you have the ability just to play the demo, even if you said I'm never buying this game, um, just play the demo. It's like 30 minutes and it's like a whole little story in itself. It's just so good. Um, but yeah, I I love it to death and I hope we get more from it. I don't think we will. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, easily my my number one. Nice. It's nice you to see you talk about, about this several one. episodes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You talked about it in several episodes, and every time you did, it was like you were telling a story. I was I was drawn in by you talking about it. It made me want to play it. So you described it very well. Uh, it's it sounds interesting as hell. Maybe not would, quite my cup of tea, but it sounds yeah. super super cool. That was you know well said because I felt the same way. I was. I was drawn in by John's commentary, but again, not for me, but I enjoyed listening mm-hmm. to John talk about it. Sometimes I spaced yeah, out, like yeah. a lie, looked up on Twitch, what Amrath <laughs> is doing, but for those, I, I, you know, I was a little interested. What's, what's John talking about? And I had, you know, did some Googling where he always talks about it, looked at some screenshots and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you could watch I, a let's play if you never play it. I mean, you could watch a well, let's, let's play and let's not push it, but I enjoyed <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> I would have loved to have done a spoiler cast. If, if I knew some people who played through this game, I would have, I would have totally done a spoiler cast on this one. It's never too late. It was fun. I'd have to play it again, but Oh my God, so much fun. So crazy. Nice. Well, my number one you may have figured it out by now. Maybe not Kirby and the forgotten land. Um, we've talked about it quite a bit already, so I don't want to go into the details. The only thing I'm going to mention Ooh. is that we did not talk about really was how amazing and how beneficial the co-op mode was. Um, waving that spear around with Waddle D made you fall <laughs> in love with him. And, uh, 
I, I 100% of this game as well, which uh, this was done. The whole family played it. We all loved it. The kids even loved playing it. They would replay some levels we already played. Uh, I loved the little arena mode that they had up top on top of the little hill up there. We did a battle. Um, all the guys did little extra bonuses. Just the little shop uh, side, uh, the little mini games and stuff. Just It was all well-rounded. Uh, lots and lots of fun. Uh, even the stupid little fishing game. Uh, call it silly, call it crazy, but that game was 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 great. Like, and to John's point, you know, I was never a big Kirby guy. Like, I you know, I think I played Kirby Dreamland on the original Game Boy, and that was probably the last Kirby game I played. But uh, this this drew you back in. I think it was the. I mean, the graphics were great. Uh, like like you said, whether it was meant to be for Odyssey or not, but lots of fun. You know, this was something that I would definitely play a, a second one or or whatever it might be. But Kirby. Did you? How much Hell did you yeah, play man. it after you rolled credits? Did you try to we, do some completion oh, stuff? Oh, we hundred percent of it. We went back okay. and we did everything. Yep, even yeah. the, the bonus world and yep, all the extra boss fights. You have to go back to do. Oh yeah, yep. Remember when we did the bounty for this and Dylan hundred percented it? Like oh my like god, hundred percented it. Like I was curious if I could try to do that, and I got to. I don't know. Like that was like the seventy percent. So if you just do all the levels and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, there is an enormous amount of shit you have to do to get the. Yeah, I probably down. took five times as long as he did, but we eventually went back and did it all. Yep, we liked this game a lot. It was awesome. Yep. I think you bring up a point too. Not a lot of people talk about the co-op of that game. Everybody talks about the game, but man, that co-op is uh, something that doesn't get mentioned awesome so Agreed. often. So that's that's great that you played it like that. You know, I don't feel the like entire a lot game. of people did, and that's awesome. Yeah, we played the entire game as co-op. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. It's man. good to it's good to wave your spear with the family. We had to, I, yeah, I, we I know I waved it out and waved it around. Waddled, Safe space. Waddled it. <laughs> I waddled <laughs> my cake. What? <laughs> Uh, all right all right let's hear your number one one. uh, (laughs) my number one is fuzzy fuzzle wig (laughs) in the united kingdom it is not i was just trying to think of some random game (laughs) Uh, my number one is stray um i am not a cat person i do not like cats but i love that game i love that world i love the dystopian future i like a good robot um (laughs) Like it's it fantastic. Not, I, pla- I, I believe that's the only platinum I've got this year on PlayStation. So I put, I dove into that game. I just bought it the other day physically just to have it because I got it not for free on PlayStation plus. <laughs> I actually paid a monthly <laughs> premium for that game, but I loved it so much that I bought it physically. So it's a, uh, it's a wonderful game. I can't talk about it enough. So yeah. Very so cool. many good robots. I'd still so play it if ones. it was rats, Drew. If it was rats, I'd still play it. That <laughs> world is what drew me in. That. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. That could be the oh. DLC for it. Like a rat DLC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would it be called instead of stray? You know, if it was a rat, it's not a stray. Squeak. Yeah. Squeak. Yeah. <laughs> rat shit. That's it. All right. Awesome I think it's I, so far we've got really good choices, I think, for number one. I'm curious to see. I know what Hambone's number one is. You know what my number one is. It's it's one game that I haven't mentioned yet, and that's Elden Ring is my number one game of the year. Um, I've never played anything like this before. Um, Never played a Souls game before Elden Ring. Um, This this game went places for me uh, because (laughs) it's one of those games where you're just like, I know I can beat this freaking thing. Like, let me just throw my my head at it for as long as it takes. And there would be bosses where I'd, I'd be like, all right, well, I guess this is what I'm doing this weekend. And uh, just, try, <laughs> <laughs> just try just try to uh, beat the, these guys. But uh, no, man, it's, it's, it's awesome. It g- gives you that um, when you walk out into the open world at first and you walk out of the, the first church or whatever, and you just see this like sprawling world and like the sort of like yellowish like aesthetic. Um, it's just like, wow, like, where do you go? And it doesn't tell you where to go. You just have to go figure it out yourself. Um, very like Breath of the Wild sort of in that way. But if Breath of the Wild was next gen and then layer in some um, really deep RPG um, elements of it. Drew, I think this is another game you would love, man. This is like mm. so high fantasy. It's it's difficult. Um, you can customize your character pretty much however you want to look or uh, what weapons you want to use. You're not locked into sort of one path. 
I, I did a dumb question. How would you compare it to Skyrim? Because that's like the only thing I can think of, like so in, in a way. So I, I've actually never played Skyrim. Okay. Um, so I don't know if, if one of you other guys can can do that comparison a little it's, bit more, but it's, it's third person. Yeah. So that's the biggest difference, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more action and, and gameplay than Sky. Skyrim has a lot of like characters talking and storylines and whatever. This but game doesn't have that at all. the same type of world as Skyrim, would you say? I'm just trying to like... No, it's it's way cooler than Skyrim, but there's like a ten year difference, so it's not. Yeah, yeah. There, there's dragons. There's like human is humanoid type creatures, but it's it's all like super fan. There's a crap ton of magic. Um, I, I, again, hmm. probably not the best story. You know, you kind of have to piece the story <laughs> together awful. yourself. But but the gameplay, um, it's and, and sort of the journey that you go on, um, and and the sense of accomplishment that you feel once you finally beat those last few bosses, it's just like nothing else, man. It definitely game of the year for me. Very cool. It's oh, we just lost Kuz. Um He's like, I hate, I hate Elden Ring. I'm out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to, I have to agree with Hambone for sure. Like not every open world gives you that breath of the world feeling when you first see the world. There's, there's lots of open world games these days. Um, not all of them give that same feeling. That's what made Breath of the Wild so special. Yeah. Elden Ring had that. Like when you walk out of the tutorial dungeon, I guess it is. And you, you walk out and you look around, you're just like, holy sh- like I can go anywhere. Like, it's mm. magical. And my first five hours of this game, I would have said Elden Ring is my game of the year. And it's it's funny because some of the some of the things you described, Hambone, which made it your number one, made it my number. What is it? Seven. Yeah. Um, which is it. My, the latter half of the game got kind of spoiled for me because the, the enemies were just way too strong. And I was using that cheat. There was like a cheat. <laughs> Bob's coming in and out. The big the big bird. The big bird cheat, which I farmed the shit out of it. I spent sometimes like two hours just leveling, 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 and it still wasn't enough. Um, So that kind of dampered it for me. But I'll be honest, lately, I've been thinking about doing another playthrough of it as a like a can't with you. Would you just stop? Um, Can I mute him? The Witcher. Um, I was I've been thinking about doing a gameplay. uh, There we go. I can mute him. Um, (laughs) Gameplay playthrough (laughs) of uh with a magic character just yes. you know that, that's what you just do right i was i was like a sword character um I'll, i can't let him back how do i let him back i don't know how to let him back i sorry um but yeah i just play through as a magic character but hope i'm like i'm hoping like do i get stuck doing the big bird again because i'm not going to do it again if i have to do that but yeah i, I had a couple buddies game. that just started the game up for the first time um and i knew we, we had this conversation going and I wanted to really make sure Elden Ring was my number one, so I started up another playthrough this weekend. Um, yeah, man, great, great freaking game. Deserves all the awards. Um, yeah, we want to do some extra categories because extra categories can be really fun, and um, so we voted on our five categories that we wanted to do, and so we're all going to go around. And we're going to just name one game. Um, this is not a top ten list, and the first one we're going to talk about is your. 2022 worst game of the year and before we do it let's just say remember these are subjective this is just per person um if if the developer is listening you know don't worry about it um but obviously worry worry about it i don't think any of these games are, are really the worst game of the year because the worst stuff is probably stuff that only drew plays hey everyone john here Unfortunately, at this point in the podcast, we lost a bit of our recording. We actually began a second fresh session when we started seeing some errors, and they were related to Drew and Kuz um, leaving the session and coming back. Usually that's not a problem, but Zencaster had some issues here. Fortunately, we did save most of it. Um, What we did lose was... Uh, a few of us explaining what our worst game of 2022 was. So I will fill that in here. Um, My pick for worst game of 2022 was Dark Deity, and I actually talked about tactics games in general um, being bad in 2022. Uh, Mario and Rabbids I didn't um, love. Uh, Dark Deity was my worst game, of course. And... Uh, Triangle Strategy, which I also did not enjoy. I just felt like 2022 was a disappointment for tactics games, and I I let it be known. I got some ribbing from Drew because he said he was just going to name sports games as his worst game of the year, but really mine was Dark Deity. 
Drew's worst game of the year was Mages and Treasures, some $4.99 trash that he downloaded. Usually he has some luck with these things, but he really didn't like this one. So that was his choice. And then Koozie went with Pac-Man World Repack. Um, he had some camera issues and um, some other remastering oddities. So this was his worst game of the year. We will pick up right now with Hambone Johnny giving his selection. Uh, let's get back to the program. So my worst game of the year for 2022, Nintendo Switch Sports. Oh, I take motherfucker. what a disappointment I'm that game was. Proud of you there. You know what? No curling. Immediately okay. knocks down. <laughs> immediately knocked down a peg there. Yeah. Um, but why can't all the four of us get into a room and, and play some bowling or some other you know bullshit mm. game together? Why can't we hit our chambara sticks, you know, virtually uh, across uh, you know the states here? I totally um, agree. It, it, uh, they just I feel like there are so many things they could have done with that game, and they're just not doing it for whatever reason. And it, I, I, I'm pissed that I paid money for this game. <laughs> it's terrible. I... Let, it's terrible. I, my hand bone, I'm gonna say I agree with you. My I played this game for 110 hours this year. That's um, fucked up. And it is number nine on my top Nintendo games of the year. Like, let alone everything else. It's just a missed opportunity, man. I just feel like they could have done so many awesome things with this game, and they just I don't know. I agree with just that. whatever after the just, lead up from from like Wii Sports and then having this it was such a letdown we we should I should have known when they did that stupid volleyball like demo during the Nintendo Direct oh, yeah. and I was like this was the worst thing I have ever seen and then I bought it anyway so shame on me you got me Nintendo on this one okay let me ask a question let me ask a question <sighs> Why did why why did this game fail when Wii Sports was so good? When Wii Sports had bowling, because that was two thousand and six, and it's two thousand and twenty-two. I see. Okay, Let me, no, it's fair. It didn't fail. The motherfucker is selling. Yeah, I was in a Best Buy today and heard a customer walk by and ask an associate, "Hey, I I love Wii Sports. Is there anything like that that you have?" And this, the associate was like, yeah, we've got this switch sports right here. It's got bowling. Fuck yeah, it does. Give it to me. Wow. Re that it's really us. We, it's yes, us. Uh, we yeah, are guys, the problem. It's us. Pointed though right now. Yeah. <laughs> we are gaming. We, we have elevated. <laughs> the rest of society has not. 80% of the gaming community loves yes. this fucking game. I think it's that's us. it. I just, it's our, it's our issue. I'm too snobby for it, but uh, Drew, you you said like the golf, like the mechanics there, like just don't feel right. Yeah, I, don't, no, I feel don't like feel right. I feel like I feel like the bowling mechanics don't feel right. The, mm. the online stuff, the the costumes are, are questionable say, at best. Say how you really feel. <laughs> they, they suck. Yeah. They suck. They suck. I yep, I, they I got my hamburger when golf came out. <laughs> yeah, and you know I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I, I haven't mean, even put even the leg strap start, on once. You even tried to start Same. Burger King. And it didn't catch on either. Like that should have caught on. That should have lit up the world mm -hmm. like fire. Burger Gang. Burger yeah, Gang. Burger, Burger, Burger Gang should have been it, man. Burger Face. And no. Burger Face. Yeah. So. I mean, I put a strap on my leg. I put a strap on. And I I mean, <laughs> like it's still. Yeah. It's just not not for me, man. I'm, I'm happy for the people who are enjoying it. But yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I feel bad Nobody's for John. enjoying it. No, you, I you like the golf. I, I like the golf. I played it today for about an hour. Yeah, I, will I mean, it's, continue it's not popping in and play. Bad. It, it, it just not not a lot of depth. And I, I would love to play with you guys. You know, I yeah, want to I want to play with my friends. And right. it, it's not letting you that's play not with much your friends, to ask which for. is stupid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's dumb. It's asinine. I, I right. totally agree with Hambone. Um, yep. You can play with friends, but you don't get any points for it. And I feel like Nintendo's reasoning would be that you would just fix all the games so that you would just keep winning, winning, for winning, what, winning. For a costume? Who cares? Like, come on, right. for a, yeah. a fucking burger? Exactly. Like, not they, even online points or like a, like a leaderboard. Well, give me, let me have the points. All they are is cosmetics. Correct. I can understand if you can't gain rank while you play with your friends. I'd be sure. fine with that. But like, I want to be able to earn points towards costumes while I play soccer with my friends or play bowling with my friends. And I remember when Nick was Nick and I were both playing soccer at the same time and loving it. And we never really approached each other about playing together because you wouldn't be able to earn points by playing it. If they just made that one change, 
I think a lot more people would be playing Switch Sports. Just that one yeah. change. I'm going to leave this one to the grandmas and John. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's fired up with that with that crowd right there. It's getting that's plenty it, man. of run. And that's fine. Man. Not plenty every game has run. to be for you, but yep, fuck this one. Yep, fair enough. All right, uh, that was our least favorite game, worst game of the year award. Uh, next one. This is you know we had to do this one. Hottest new character mm. of the year. Um, this is for 2022. Obviously, um, a 2022 game. Who was your hottest character? I went with a human. I went with a person. Shame on you. Shame on you. I don't even feel great shame. My hottest new character of the year uh, is Marissa Marcel from Immortality. Uh, It's played by an actress. It's it's video recorded. It's not a video game character. Um, She is. uh, She's cute. Um, She, you know, this is this is a game about playing found footage from movies that were done. Um, She's like flirty she's funny she's whatever she's just a very endearing character and a kind of a perfect main character to have for a game like this she keeps your interest um she's lots of charisma um and yeah i'll give an honorary mention um after we're all done but um marissa marcel Drew was googling as you were talking. It was amazing (laughs) to see his brain, his his brain (laughs) and his hands were both working at the same time. I need the visual. That's right. Um, When you play just Nintendo and a lot of shitty games, there's not a lot of options. So I went with a character that only Handbones probably don't know, and uh, I'm going with Samantha from (laughs) Wildcat Gun Machine. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Something about her. Yeah, man. With the eye patch and everything. I'm Googling this time, Kevin. <laughs> how did how did she lose an eye, man? Eye patch. How did she how did she lose an eye? You don't know. Anything. Could, Could be, be anything. anything. You never know. Could I like be. the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even find I like it. it. What it, what was the game called? Wildcat Wild Gun, Gun Machine. Machine. It's got, pretty much I did a first look for the Nintendo dads with that one. I, I, I finished that game. Drew onto you told it. Me it, to was play a, it was a fun game. I, Definitely it, a true game. Solid C plus. Yeah, maybe B minus. Oh, Shoot him up you. game. True game. It's a true game. I remember you 100%. talking about it on the show. Hmm. Yeah. And Hambo did suggest it. And you did play it. And Samantha has an eye patch and she's hot. She, awesome. She she does. <laughs> <laughs> My hottest character is the freshly frosted girl. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, dude. Here I just I want go. her to talk to me. I just want Does her to talk to me all night. I wish I wish I had a voice quote from her like I had from Drew earlier and could just bust out her voice. She's like, oh, man, there's something about it. You don't even see her. You just hear her like, oh, it's a good fucking day for a donut, isn't it? Wait, oh, there's like, not even yeah. a picture Holy of her. Shit. No, there's not even a picture. No, there's just no voice. It's only I'll, a voice. I'll, Wow. I will say Tell I have to go bone. back and find I, ha- I have to go back and find it because I was talking to John about this game. I was like, dude, you just gotta try it. This the, the narrator has the most fuckable voice. It's I like, oh I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's yes, like Sadie. 100%. Nobody, nobody knows what yeah. Sadie looks like, but we all want her. Exactly. Yeah. We know what she looks like. We have video well, of her. Yeah, but nobody else mm. does. Oh, okay. But yeah, amazing. John, can Who's you I'm clip right there in with a you, clip man. of freshly frosted girl? I um I will try to do that, but I'm looking up who it is. So I have Do a name. Oh, it, don't it ruin Sadie. my dream. Don't ruin my fucking yeah, dream. Yeah, you know what he really. Well, the cool thing about that game, I think the person who narrated it also was like the creator and and did a lot of the coding on it. So, props to her, man. Oh my god, this yeah. is perfect. Oh my god, is she some like fat chick, like missing teeth? Um, well, I'm trying to find out what other uh, voices they've done. It's a little tricky to figure it out because I think they have the same name as somebody else. Um, but um, saying girl Don't is incorrect it is they them pronouns. And um, I'm trying to figure out what else they've done. And I'm having trouble because the person that I look up, um, they go by Ali O. Taylor. But there's an Ali Taylor. So I'm having trouble finding um, the IMDb for Ali O. Don't ruin it for Cruz. Just let him be. You're fucking yeah. killing yeah. me, Blanco. Game, You're though. killing really me. I game. love to look up voices in games to see what other voices they did. Thank you, Hambo. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome I just want, voice. I want to know yes. what other what other Whoever voices you are they out there. Done. Great job with that game. Don't change it's anything. Fantastic game. Awesome yeah. game. Awesome voice. Yep. Mm. Yep. They also are the yep. writer uh, for Freshly Frosted. Wow. Two so, thumbs yeah, up. Not not just a voice actress. Yeah. Awesome game. Okay. Good for right. them. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I, 
Oh, yeah, well, go ahead, John. No, no, go ahead, John. No, okay, you didn't. I'll... You didn't go. John's already gone. I didn't go, but he, he had things to Pimple's say. Gone. No, Pimple's no, gone. I, 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 no, I. Yeah, you need to go. Okay, I'll go. My hottest character, new character of 2022, Ronnie the Witch from <laughs> Elden Ring. So, oh, all right. No, no, no cleavage, no TNA, no nothing. Ronnie, um, Ronnie, R A N N I. But I'm gonna drop in um, a, a Twitter uh, little something something. Um, one of my favorite cosplayers oh, who does who does do have that. the assets. Uh, Jessica yep. Negri did an awesome, awesome cosplay of this girl. Yep. You know, yeah, she's got she's got uh-huh. four hands. She sold it. What what are you gonna do with those other two hints? I don't know. I don't know. I, I know. going somewhere. Jerk off yep. Waluigi. Waluigi. That's it, man. And stick <laughs> but, the other um, one up yeah. your ass. <laughs> that's it. Ronnie the witch, the blue hair, blue skin. That's a good one. That's a good call. Yeah. So yeah, that is a good call. I I, I want to add the reason why I didn't want to say my honorary mention because I thought it was a possibility you were gonna pick her, but mine was Melina from Elden Ring too. The, I was almost gonna pick her, but she's got the Scarlet Rot man. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> I, right. I'm off. I'm what? off the she had the most skin out of all the bosses and stuff and definitely was the, the hottest probably back in the day, but half her body was just rotten. So yeah, I'll, I know, but it's like, I'll, it's like, I'll stay away. Like, would you, you know, it's like if Anna Kendrick had the rot, would you go no. for it anyway? No, man. Are you kidding me? What, what, she what wouldn't kinda... be the same Anna Kendrick. No, that's, dude. The, that's the point. I don't know. <laughs> Terrible. But yeah. yeah, that's my hottest character. Ronnie. Didn't she sacrifice herself in the game? Really? Like she got that rot for you. Spoiler alert. That, trust me, there's no spoiler alerts in story yeah. on Elden Ring. <laughs> don't, don't ask me about this. I can't piece it together. I have no idea. I will say she is the hottest girl I've ever seen that only has one eye. Um, hey, Drew's girl had an eye patch. What the fuck, yeah. man? Fuck don't describe like, yeah, but that. She's hotter. She's hotter than her. You don't know. You don't know nothing about Samantha as a person. <laughs> <laughs> what about that other chick that was in our 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 booty bracket? Didn't she have one eye? Yeah, that, that was, that's Melina. Yeah, that's Melina. No, oh, okay then. So, Melina? So, I don't know how to pronounce her name. That's what I, I know. Oh, wait, hold on. The, the one that the, uh, your maiden or the, um, the, the character from like the box art and stuff with the, with the, the helmet. The maiden. Oh. Yeah, the, is... the first one that oh, okay. visits yeah, yeah, you. No, yeah, she, yeah. She, she doesn't have the rod. I was talking about the other okay. one. Yeah, there's another one with a similar name, right? Like it's very, it's kind of weird. Is... Yeah. I can't, I, I don't do know it. what the other person's name is. Hmm. Um, you're too into the weeds here. We gotta move on. Yeah, okay. yep. Move on. Favorite right. gaming moment. Favorite Ooh. gaming moment of the year, <laughs> Sir John Blanco. What you got? Um, this gaming moment is kind of a big spoiler, so I really won't elaborate on it. But um, if you know it, you know it, and if you don't, you don't. Um, but the the jaw dropping moment of the year for sure for me was the um, I'll call it the Mio swap. From Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'll just leave it at that. Um, amazing moment. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Drew, Still Drew knows. I Drew know. Knows. Yeah. You guys don't know. Well, you probably think I don't know because you think I don't remember anything. But I know. I never see. You memorize everything. Oh, that's right. Um, I mean, you have CTE, but it affects different things. It affects different. short-term different. conversations. <laughs> <laughs> selective. Um, selective. Remember that. That's my That's my moment of the year. I'll, I'll move on though. I can't talk right, about it, right? So like you, you would can't. agree, Drew, right? You can't you talk. You gotta about leave it. it at that. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And just in case you ever play the, game, even if you, and it'd be hard to describe if you don't know the game. Yeah. Anyways, two really quick ones. Uh, one was more of an announcement when they announced Mario Strikers in that direct. That for me was like in my pants explosion. Oh um, yeah, that was an, a wow moment. But from a video game playthrough, again, I can't really talk about it. But if you know, you know, I'm just going to say inscription. That's it. Because there's so many moments. Um, Can you narrow it down or are you just going to say inscription? I think it was the first time. Like after you beat the first playthrough. <laughs> okay. Because right. it, it came out of nowhere, right? You're like, what? If you know, then, you know. But then, it, but then it follows up more and more and more throughout the game. So right. it, 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 there was multiples. But I think the first one was like, what? I love that this is like a total spoiler category. <laughs> yeah, right. It is. And Inscription's newer, so I'm really not going to do the detail. I think who's I think I told you the other day when we were playing Mario Kart. Yeah. But sweet. Uh for me, it's um it may just be a personal thing. And this may be the only VR game we have on any list of the day. 
Um, when I played golf plus for the first time this year mm -hmm. and stepped out on that course and swung that golf club, it was like I was on the fucking golf course. It was amazing. The That's experience cool. for me was mind blowing. Like this is the golf game that everyone needs. This is, this is the one I was looking for and I'm there in there. You know, I saw a caddy, you know, roll up, throw me some clubs and hollered at the cart girl to bring me a beer. And it's <laughs> you're, you're there. That's awesome. Playing it. That is cool. I might have exaggerated a little bit, but you get the, the game point. is amazing. It's it's amazing. It's that's awesome. Best best golf game out there, and just to be there on the links, swinging the clubs, playing the balls. It's uh, I, I it was, have I have a dumb question with these VR games. Is yeah. there a way to project them as well on the TV so like someone else in the room can watch you? It depends on the system. With the yeah. PlayStation VR, it does stream to the TV. With the Oculus 2, you have to have a Google Chromecast that it can go through with that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But cool. it works. I think it'd be better, if, especially in a golf, right? Like, let's say you wanted to play 18 holes with, with your buddy or something. It'd be nice if they could watch. You know what I'm saying? They can play. That's the thing. Yeah. It's multiplayer, too. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Hmm. Yeah. Take note. Switch sports. Yeah, no Switch doubt, sports, man. <laughs> no doubt. I, I love that the game is called Golf Plus after everything we were talking about earlier. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. I, I have cheated with my favorite game, gaming moment of the year. The pure gaming moment, my favorite one of this year, Hades 2 announcement. <laughs> I yes. lost my shit. Uh, well, yeah. I'm about yeah. to cheat. I just uh, said an announcement too. So, so yeah, I can't wait for Hades 2. Um, I'm going to play Hades again probably like two more times before that game comes out. Wow. Give me some Hades. Love it. Um, but here's here's my little cheat. I will say that this is one of my favorite go gaming moments of the year is when uh, we had the little little meetup with uh, Drew and Coos and we hit the arcade and we were yeah. playing some games and hanging out and just like yeah. just hitting the vibes, man. I that had a great time, man. Time. That, that was a really, really fun trip. Coos, thanks again for coming out and seeing us. And for oh, the goodies for our kids, dude. Absolutely. Well, yeah, what dude. a great time. What it a really be great the last time. time. We'll do it. We've again. got some I'm, got a good friend group here. So I'm gonna have to watch oh, that video awesome. again for a little memory reboot. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. sure. So those are my moments. Awesome. I, I will, I have to say, Hambone, I will when when I play Hades 2, I will remember um that we were reacting to that at the same time. And it was like we both knew right away. It was like, no way. Oh, uh, it was so fun. Um that, that was, was really fun. fun. Sweet. All right. All right. Most difficult, right? Most difficult game of the year. This is any game released any time, but it's a game that we played this year. So mm. it doesn't have to be a 22 journey to game. Um, and uh, usually there's always some indie game that's out there. that's just like freaking hell, like uh, Necro Dancer for me is just still one of the hardest games I've ever played. Um, but this year it's a very mainstream one. Mine's Elden Ring. Um, I'm downright shocked that I finished this game. I think I quit it twice. We had a chat room going with you, uh, Hambone and I, and Sean and Nick, and it was a really fun time. That made that game a lot more fun to play through. Um, but I feel like I quit a couple times in the last three or four bosses where it was just boss, 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 and they were just brutally hard. Just imagine playing a game where your character can move very little, very stodgy, um, and you're fighting bosses that are flying through the air and zipping around. It's, it's ridiculous. And I had a boss that I think I fought for three or four hours um, wouldn't even get close and i was basically done with the game and um, i think i went back and farmed to try to get some so the spell that brings up your clone and um yep. yeah, the and then like i was and then i quit again and then i remember i was just one night at like midnight i, I was like let me just try it and i was there for another hour hour and a half and then i did it and i was like oh my god i got past it um and it did not get easier after there were more yeah. bosses now nah, there's more bullshit after that um and um, it did affect how I ranked the game, but um, and I did beat it. Um, but that, that was easily just what I thought the most difficult game of the year. Nice. Drew. Well, John, I had to give you credit when credit's due here. And my next one is a game you made me play, which is one of your favorite games of all time, which I struggled with into the breach. Ooh. Um, I could not. I don't think I could beat it. I, and I play, I gave it like 20 hours, 25 hours. I mean, I'm, I'm sure no hundred hours probably you did, but I don't think I ever physically beat like all five islands. Is, was there five? You can do it after beating like, I think three islands. 
Um, but you can do three or four I islands. I don't think it's correct, but I don't think I'd beat it. I don't think I ever beat it. I, I just couldn't. Yeah. And I struggled with this game, and you say it all the time, is this, is a, this isn't this is a game that you're going to win by doing brute strength. You've got to kind of sit back and play defensively and, and outsmart the opponent, um, like chess. But it, it's... um. It was fun, but I, I struggled with it. I think I think I, I kind of gave up on it because I was getting frustrated with it after 20 or 25 hours. But um, yeah, game's hard. Game's hard. Different it type is. of game. The islands you can get through too. That that final zone is like a two part battle where you don't get refreshed. Um, and and I, I, I lost the first few times I yeah. did it. I died too. And I remember I've the first time lot. beating the part one. I was like, I did it. And then yep. it's like, all right, do this level, and it's a little harder. It's like, mm. holy shit. Yeah, so yeah, it, is, no, it is a hard yep. one. I still have trouble with it. So that's my game. Uh, the hardest, the most difficult game I played this year was Time on Frog Island. What's your time, <laughs> 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 oh Sounds like a okay. really hard game. <laughs> yeah. My uh, most difficult <laughs> game. All right, yeah, here we that's go. It. Uh, that's it? We're doing All right, all right. cool. Uh, mine is Cursed to Golf. Oh, um, yeah. That game was really freaking hard, and I haven't beaten it yet either. Wow. Um, the Not difficulty spike on that one was just crazy. I just I never got the First right cards. Or... The the backspin uh, controlling, I never could get the hang of. Um, yeah, man. Uh, freaking difficult game. I, I, I will say, since you brought the game up, Hambone... <laughs> This was probably, if not my most, my second most disappointed game. I think oh, I was so yeah. hyped for this game. I was hyped for this. I wanted just... this game to be awesome, and mm-hmm. it, it didn't hit. It didn't hit in so many ways. It became, yeah. it was less a golf game and more of, I don't want to say puzzle, but. It was a puzzly, of, yeah, like it wasn't a puzzle. It wasn't a true golf game. No, it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't what I thought it was, and it wasn't as fun as I wanted to. Did they have like a time frame limit on some of the shows? It just it got to be. Yeah, there was some would, weird, some they weird. They had decisions. some really good ideas in there. It just mm. as a package, it just wasn't. No. It wasn't there for me, and it was really hard. So that's that. Good one. Yeah. All right, so Sweet. John, what are we next? Last one. Uh, best game that you played this year that is not a 2022 release. This is always a fun category because I think all of us will play older games. Hmm. Um, and, uh, it's always good to recognize that. Um, honorary mention before I do it, the Lost Legacy collection, Uncharted 4 and, uh, Lost Legacy. I I had an incredible experience playing those. Um, but the best game I played this year is one that is, um, I think has gotten some game of the year awards in the past. And still just hasn't left my head since I played it. And that is Disco Elysium. Um, This took me a while to really embrace. It was a game I was waiting for to come to Switch, and then it did. But um, I wasn't too happy with the performance. I put it on my wish list. And then eventually I got to play in it. And the first character I created, and I was like, what is this? And I I wasn't really loving it. Um, And then the second time I started playing it, I really clicked in. What makes Disco Elysium so good is it's it's... It's kind of a point and click game, but it's also very much an RPG. Um, Your character has stats that, you know, involve, you know, not just things like luck and strength and whatever, like an RPG. But um, we're talking about like your ability to reason through problems and and probabilities and successes. And so you like when I played through the game, I played through as a strength character. And so I would solve all my problems with strength. If there was a lock on a door, I might like beat the lock off. But if I had a more mental character, I might be able to uh, figure out the password with missing digits. Um, so there's lots, there's so many approaches to solving every problem in this game. And depending on your character, you do it. But then as you go through the game, and I think you level up or, or whatever, you can add um, uh, ability points to different things. So you can become stronger and become smarter and, and all that jazz. Um, and the probability aspect is, is amazing to me because... Um, you might have one chance to convince a character to give you information and it might say you have a 60% chance of doing this if you do it this way. And you really got to think about it because you got one chance at this thing and you just, you roll it and you see some dice come on the screen and it's like burnt red and you're like, oh fuck. But then you might get green and you're like, yeah. Um, So playing this game multiple times, you might actually get some different things to happen because you might've only had one shot. It's an incredible game. 
not in terms of narrative games, like not a game that I would like immediately play through again and again and do different things because the game takes a while to play. It's like 30 hour game, um, but it's still in my head. I whenever I see pictures of it or whatever, and it's it's a magnificent game. Um, absolutely magnificent. I, I loved every minute of it. It's great. Great story and everything. So um, that's my game. Very nice. Um, like you mentioned, honorable mention, I gotta mention it. Shame to say, but Majora's Mast was the first time I've ever fully completed it. Played through the NSL. That was actually a lot of fun. That's a great um, pick. It yep, was a lot of fun. It is. But my, number, but my actual pick I'll go with would be Darksiders Genesis, because we all know how much I'm obsessed with the Darksiders. More importantly, it's about the Four Horsemen. Why wouldn't I love it? Um, <laughs> but this this game is is different than the the normal Darksiders 1, 2, and 3, which is a 3D action um platformer slash combat hatch and slash whatever you want to call it uh but this one's different it's more of like a bird eye view kind of kind of like diablo-ish dungeon crawler hatch and slash kind of like the old school gauntlet legends a little bit uh, but the same world same universe just tons and tons of fun this these are like my favorite genres of games is is this style of game um, and then you throw in there one of my favorite franchises of video gaming and, and um it was a huge hit i didn't this came out in 2019 i didn't know it even existed i just i missed it just one of those things i missed um i think it originally came out on either playstation or xbox and then it ported over to the switch and when i found out i said yep I'm gonna be playing this and um loved it absolutely loved it so awesome. let's start ciders at genesis uh mine was the last of us too um last of us part one is number two on my all-time favorite games list the last of us two is probably in the top 10 now it's not as good as number one but man it's it's damn good um graphics were amazing story was chef's kiss i mean the the the, the emotions that game takes you through are some of the craziest roller coaster emotional rides i've ever had in a video game it was uh, you got to play that next hand bone i mean yep. not next like tomorrow but no it's on the list. Like since you've played one now you got to play two it's on my short list for sure yeah to find out the rest of the story but yeah fantastic game that game is like you ne you've never seen a story told like that like yeah nowhere it's incredible hmm. awesome Pretty brutal though. It's a brutal game to play. Oh <laughs> yeah. Tough. It'll oh yeah. Put you in a space. Yep. Oh god. Great. All right. All right. So That's my awesome. best non twenty twenty two game I played this year is Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, of course. I yeah. thought this game was freaking awesome. I um I, I'll I'll make the brief comparison to an Assassin's Creed type game just because of the open world, um and sort of how things are laid out and the different objectives that you have. Um, but again, you know, the story that you go on with the main character, Jin Sakai, and his sort of couple like arcs he has throughout the the journey is is just incredible. The combat, super fun. Um, you really feel for his his plate in the situation that he and like his his people are in. Um, it has um you know, obviously it's not completely historically accurate to the happenings of, you know, eighteen hundreds or whenever it was you know, Japan, probably you now 1400 something. Um, but uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, awesome, awesome area to kind of play a game in. Um, I didn't do it this way, but I know that some people played it with uh, the Japanese um, voice actors and subtitles, and then you can play it in black and white and sort of <laughs> go through that at, at like an old school, like um, like samurai, like Western type type. Uh, movie, yeah, that's cool. That's which cool. is which is really cool. So I, you know, um, it's got a lot going on for it. Um, yeah, that's that's my game. How long right. was that playthrough, Hambone? You probably can beat it in 25 hours, but if you're going to do everything, it's closer to like 40, 45. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, no, hmm. it's not too bad. Sweet. Nice. All right. Um, so that is our top 10s. That's our bonus categories. Um, I We can move on to the next thing, but before we do, does anybody have any like parting thoughts about 2022 in general? Um, I have one for sure, but um, anybody have any parting thoughts for 2022? Drew, give me your parting thoughts for 2022. What'd you think? I said nothing. 
All right. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Talked about I it for a year. That, yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> happened. There's nothing left Really to say. have. I think every year we get hyped up and we're like, oh, this next year, look at all this shit that's coming out. I can't wait. This next year is going to be a fantastic game for gaming. Then it comes, everything fucking gets delayed or the game doesn't live up to the hype. I think we overhype ourselves, you know? I think yeah. the the moral of the story is is to keep your expectations low and it'll be a better gaming year than, you know, it might have been if you got all hyped up. Yeah, and if you're so, not, you always have mages and treasure. Fucking A, always. It That's will it. always be there. Frosted, frosty donuts, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's freshly frosted. Shit, right. like, you weren't you hyped should, for yeah. that game, but nope. now look at you. Number three on my list, partner. Spiders. <laughs> didn't know that existed probably a few months ago. <laughs> no, I didn't. Have the Spider time of your head. life playing. You don't That's need right. to have hype. That's right, buddy. That's right. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And, yep. and some of the more hyped up games, like you're saying, I, I, I'll got be honest. Delayed or, yeah. I'll be honest. When High on Life was about to release, I was keeping an eye on it because I said, if this game isn't good, um, we need to talk about some of the overhype that we've seen this year. There's definitely been hyped games that met or exceeded expectations. And I think Elden Ring is one of them. Um, God of War Ragnarok is one of them. Yeah. Um, but there, it did feel like throughout the year, there was a lot of hyped games that missed. Yep. And um, I think Nintendo is one of the biggest offenders of this. And I know my, my opinions of Mario and Rabbids and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 are a little different than sort of the mainstream. But I think there's some agreement on at least Xenoblade Chronicles 3 here. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Nintendo's 22, they're, they're not putting, even if you liked some of the games, they're not putting the special in them like I feel like they can. Um, there mm -hmm. are games like some of the ones we talked about, The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, whatever, that have like special, like uh, th special moments, special things that happen. And I, I feel like with like games like Nintendo Switch, bless you, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, um, for me, Mario Rabbids, um, just, you know, Mario Strikers, where Nintendo could really go above and beyond, and they just don't for some Keep reason. the last time Nintendo has done that. Well, as what I'm saying is like they, they need to do start. That. That's not. That's not. But I, I. But I don't want to hear like they don't have to or whatever. When I didn't say that, I just said that's not who they. That's not who they are. I like. Yeah. I'll use as an example uh, a Denver example. The the very famously the Denver Nuggets and the uh, Colorado Avalanche are not on cable in Denver. It's crazy. It's bizarre. You can only get them on one of the Dish networks. That's it. Um, and that's been going on for years. And we've literally saw our hockey team win a Stanley Cup. And in general, people can't watch it on TV. Um, and that's crazy. And you might say, well, it doesn't really affect things right now. But like if you're growing up and you're a kid and you didn't see the Avalanche win the Stanley Cup, um, you might not become a hockey fan later on that you would have. And if Nintendo is making mid-level games where they're just not putting in the special sauce like they should and they're reserving it for games like Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, mm -hmm. um, you might the not see the younger not, yeah. generation grow up and really appreciate those games. It's a valid um, point. Whereas some younger kids might remember The Last of Us, or not younger kids, but like, you know, a hmm. younger generation might remember some of those more special games. But when we talk about those special moments and special games, more and more, we're not talking about the Nintendo games. Um, and I really right. feel like I want to see them up. And I feel like Tears of the Kingdom will be one of those games, but they need to do that with the Switch Sports and the, because they're 95% of the way there. And it's just yeah. they pull they pull back at the end and it becomes not so special. Right. That's if they'd have thrown in a Bowser costume and switch sports, they would have pushed them to the hundred percent. I mean, those Maybe. costumes those costumes would have been great. I don't know why they didn't do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, being able to play with your friends and earn points together, like just that sort of thing. And they just don't do it. Yeah. I mean, you make a super valid point. I think I also think kids today are playing Minecraft and Fortnite over and over and over and not even looking for that special sauce. But I, I definitely see your point of view. Yeah. Give us the sauce, Nintendo. Fucking give us the sauce in my face. <laughs> Could have did it with Splatoon 3. Splatoon yeah, right 3 is we... another good example. Right. Battle pass it up. Yeah. Get yeah. some online, online yards. Yeah. yeah. For I sure, might have played more. I like the game, right? Number seven could yep. have been number four if it drew me in more. <laughs> drew you in, yeah. I Drew'd feel like it, they could have done a little bit more. We talked about um, having it be, 
kind of like a Fortnite style or whatever. And I think what we got is a lot of the same and it's a great formula, but like, why didn't we get a little bit more? I don't, you know, mm-hmm. um, just feels mm. kind of samey. I don't know. Mm. Yep. All right. All John, right. What we got next? Um, I believe Bob is going to take over the next oh, little man. bit. Yes. Take it away, Bob. I... Yeah, for sure. This episode is special. It's the last one of the year. Here we are all together. It's extra long, and I'm about to make it longer because that's what I do, baby. Uh, So this past two weeks, I listened through every episode of the year, starting with January 3rd, episode 89 of this year. I listened to them on 1.75 speed <laughs> and blazed through them all. Just the main episodes. I didn't listen to the side, the side hustles. So I went through the episodes, picked out some trivia to ask you guys, Hambone, Absolutely. You're in this. And Hey, listeners, you're in on this too. Go ahead and see how much you remember of this fantastic year of dads after dark. We were all a part of it along for the ride. Let's go. So, question number one. Oh. Back in episode 13. Shit. Drew asked you a question. I asked you the same question in episode 100 of this year. You didn't answer it correctly either time. So, maybe third time's <laughs> the charm here, Blanco. What are steamers? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this one. No! That's Isn't a steamer when you take a shit on somebody? That's a Cleveland steamer. <laughs> That's a Cleveland steamer. That's a special okay. steamer. What's the context of steamers? Like when that, you don't, it's just, you that, just know if you know. You just, yeah, is what it is. It's, it's an, it's, it's a tangible thing. Let's put it that way. We give, we give them a hint. It's tangible and you can eat it. There you go. Big hint. Yeah. It's not my dick. Which, which is both of those two things. <laughs> Depends on who you ask, Cambone. <laughs> He's doodling it. I don't know. How about a little clams. neck? Little neck? Clams. Yeah, clams. clams. Oh. Clams. You steam them, you pop them, you eat them. Wow. Yep. Okay. A little celery, In that some onion. same episode, episode 100, which featured myself and Hambone, which made it so much better. Uh, there was Golf League 2 was going on. Who? Yeah. This is for all of you. Who was the final four in Golf League 2? <sighs> it was Hambone. Yep. It was not me. I lost. Max Power. Yeah, Max, Max was Power. probably in there. Yep. Golf League 2. Uh, mm-hmm. Final four I in Golf League 2. I want to say an informant, but I don't know for a fact. I think he an informant. Any no. guesses, Hambone? Uh, was Nick? Is Nick up there? Nick, Ooh, I Nick think was he. One. I think he. He had a good uh, mini golf. Yeah. I remember that. Yep. Hambone, Max Power, Nick Tindo, not an and, informant, and Drew. It was me? I must have left in the set. Yeah. Lost to the semis. Yep. I lost to Max Power. All right. In episode ninety-one, back in January, uh, you both decided, "Fuck it, we're selling our kids." Um, you both, you both decided on a price that you were going to sell a child for. Um, do you remember what those prices were? 10 million. Oh, it was way less. Yeah, I, think, I, th- I remember Drew being remarkably low and, no, and John was low. It was like 500,000, I think. To sell your kid, I, I remember this conversation. Someone walked in, you were at the I, grocery I, store or something. Yeah, and they, yeah, they, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think Drew. I think you wanted to sell your son for cheap, but your I daughter must have been was a rough expensive. Time. Must have been I a rough I time. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses, Blanco? I'm still going ten million. Um. <laughs> All right. Um. John said he would sell his middle child. <laughs> So fucked up. For four hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, Drew said he'd sell his son for a million. All right, all right. Yeah. That's not bad. Not bad. Yep. Uh, fun <laughs> fact: the next episode, episode ninety-two on Valentine's Day, John was by himself for an hour and carried the whole show, which was awesome. That takes some skill to carry a whole podcast by yourself for over an hour. Mm. Congratulations to you, Blanco. That was a feat in itself. I'd say Drew was out celebrating. 
Valentine's Day with his wife, and Blanco was recording a podcast by himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In June, episode 101, Drew Googled Hammer Kid porn mm -hmm. and got scared that the feds would come get him. John said, if they do, I will replace you with who? Probably one of you two. Maybe both? I would I would hope it was one of you two. Amy. You all aren't good at get you're just like, oh, maybe I don't know. You gotta guess. Are you trying to win this thing or are you just trying to half ass it? I'm going with, with, with both of you two. He said he would replace you with Hambone Johnny. Wow. <laughs> no, the New Englander. I get it. <laughs> Amazing. He knows yep. what steamers are. Pretty consistent. Yep. Give him the steam. <laughs> this, Drew, you got this one. Okay. In February, episode 93, the day after our Mario Party fiasco, in which mm. I drank everything that has ever been brewed. Yes. Drew goes to K KFC. Sorry, it's not Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. Drew goes to KFC, and they are out of true. buns when he orders his chicken sandwich. That's right. What does he get instead? A chicken little. Was it? Well, they would yep. be out of buns too for that. They got you got two chicken littles. Two I chicken guess they littles. had the chicken little buns, but not they the did. chicken sandwich. Buns. I've read, they yeah. they didn't even Ch give me the option. They just replaced my chicken sandwich with two chicken littles. Yeah, yeah and chicken littles suck. Yeah, you did not, not like, like they them. Used to be. See, no. I do yeah. that one. I, I remember I was right. going to hockey. I I had faith in you. I knew you'd know that. I one. remember the, the I same remember episode. The same episode. You were delivered your. Wii U hours. Hours played on Wii U, Nintendo sent to your email. <laughs> Excuse how me? Many hours, how many hours was your playtime on the Wii U? There is no way anyone's that, there's remembering no way that. You can get, how about just if you can get within 300 hours? Oh, my God. 850 total hours. That's so high. Right. Why would you guess that? Okay. I put, I put That's over like three 1, years. Hundred hours in just this year on the Nintendo Switch. So yep. why would I think eight hundred and fifty is crazy for the lifetime of the Wii U? Stand by it. Eight fifty had no games. Eight fifty. <laughs> Drew put in four hundred and seventy-one hours on the Wii U. Half of that. John Blanco put in sixteen hundred hours on the Wii U. <laughs> but there's no you games. Made fun so. of me. I, right. Well, no, I think a lot of that was my son. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Should have lowered, okay. lowered your guess, Drew. Let's see. A, uh, episode 107. The 3DS eShop is closing. What is the game that John buys? Oh, I know this one. Can I guess it? If Drew has no guesses. Hold on, I'm distracted. So the, the, the 3DS <laughs> shop is uh, Metroid. Um, that Metroid game. Nope. What Metroid game? Hammer Kid 2 and a half. Metroid. Uh, what was the Metroid game there on 3? Samus Returns? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good guess. Oh. Pocket yeah. Card Jockey. That's it. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know what the hell that is. Yeah. Same episode. It's really popular. A lot of people talk about it. It's a tough question. I didn't yeah. love it, but I, I think if ridiculous. I try it again, I might. That was probably one of the things I was zoning out on. Yeah. Same episode, I sent in a question and asked if either one of you had any irrational fears. John listed three. I'm about to give you four. One of these is incorrect. Okay. Of John's irrational fears. Can you pick out which one? He said, turning on the barbecue grill scared him. Leaving Christmas lights on scared him. Leaving the screen door open to let bugs in scared him. And he doesn't like parking by other cars. All right. I'm going to say the barbecue grill, 100%. Yes, that's in. Absolutely, in, 100%. Parking near cars, I feel it is also in. Also, also in. <laughs> Definitely Leaving in. the screen door open and Christmas lights on. I'm going to say leaving Christmas lights on it sounds like something he'd be a fair feared of. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going screen door. Screen door. Screen door. Yeah, screen I don't even door, have a screen door. That's correct. Yeah. Screen door is it. I made that up. Good job. That was a good one. 
We don't yeah. have screen doors in Colorado. I do. In <laughs> episodes uh, 108 in September, the name Herman Oots was <laughs> Hoots. 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 Became Herman Oots. I just want to throw that out there. And you were guessing his name and you guessed Herman Oots. Oots. Wait, who 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 are we talking about? Oots. Oots. The Discord. Oots in the Discord oh, the chat. Discord guy. We yeah. said his first we said his first name's Herman. Yeah, you're, you're trying yeah. to, to guess the, the background Herman of his Oots. name. I mean it makes yep. sense. This Herman is the Oots. episode that Drew talked about, the fantastic visit where I came to visit him and Hambone Johnny. Mm-hmm. We went to the casino, we gambled money. How much money did we win total? Oh. Six hundred dollars. I fucking wish, Drew. I thought we had we were holding. I thought it was two hundred. No, no. I thought we were each holding two hundred dollars. Oh, Hambone's doing the math. What is what two forty? Two forty. We walked away with two forty is correct. Uh, we threw down twenty bucks. Correct. We all won. I, I, we threw I down forty I bucks. We my, all won. I, I think I think I helped you guys win at the end, and I never you got did. my fee. Well, you didn't put any money up either. <laughs> To flip a handbone, like knew that in the back of his mind. Yeah, <laughs> it was there. Back in January, episode ninety, Sean Abbott tells us what cottaging is. <laughs> what is cottaging? <laughs> cottaging. It's oh. when you How do I forget meet this? a hooker at a cottage and fuck, and then leave. Oh, I was going to nope. say something about cheese. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the hooker. I can't remember at all. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it was guess? something about um, fucking remember. dudes in bathrooms or something. You had close. to tap your foot under oh. the stall, oh, having sex yeah. with dudes in bathrooms. Yeah, because there was that bathroom. congressperson that got, <laughs> got caught That's doing right. that. Wow. Okay. Uh, same episode, you both listed your top three anticipated games of the year. Would you like to take a stab at what those are, or would you like for me to tell you? What was this? The what? 20. Your top three anticipated games of the year you threw out in January. What oh games God. did okay. you pick? Breath of the Wild 2. Has to be, right? I don't nope. know what was announced then or not yet. Was Strikers oh, we... announced? Strikers. No, I don't think so. Splatoon? Splatoon 3. Yes, that was on my yeah. list. Splatoon was one of yours, Drew. Yeah, I think, I think Drew, you had Curse the Golf on there, Curse too. Curse the Golf I was on say. there. Curse the Golf was there. And Gollum Never came was your out. third. Delayed no, 2023. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense though. John. Okay. John, you uh, probably had Advance War probably on there. Advance Wars say. was one. Yes. Advance we've been Advance Wars, Breath of the Wild 2. Nope. Right? No? Well, gee. Um, mm. I don't think it was Horizon Forbidden West at that time. Maybe Elden Ring? Xenoblade. Uh, it was Bayonetta 3. <laughs> And Long the last one, was Rabbids. Oh, Ra- last one was Rabbids. Last one was Rabbids. Sparks wow. of Hope. Man. That, oh, what a list of home. disappointment that was. <laughs> yep. Wait, what was the first one I said? Was it um, Advance Wars? Three, Advance Wars, and um, Rabbids. Sparks Holy of shit. Hope. So my three yeah. most anticipated games of 2022 are a game that I refused to play, a game that I said was one of the worst of the year. Yep. And a game that didn't come out. And a game that didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> wow That's all right on the flip side one, once we hit july middle of july episode 104 you lifted you, you listed your halfway best halfway of the year best games can you do you have any guesses on those strikers strikers is on there drew is your number hmm. three of your top you only you listed your top three strikers was your third wow i think john must have said uh Amazing horizon treasures horizon was his <laughs> number one yeah, yeah. Was Rising Kirby out and yet? When did Kirby come out? Kirby was your number one, Drew. Kirby. Yeah, that was a spring. Yep. Was mine Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon? Was that my three by that point? Yep, it was. Okay. Splatoon yep. wasn't out yet. My two was Elden Ring. Elden Ring was. Yep. Drew, your two is Nobody Saves the World. Okay. Oh, so that's God. Good. That what was that? the first half? Wow. Great game. Bonus yeah. question. How many times this year did John say that I... Sir Bob Cousy, I'm not an elite gamer. 18 times. I'm going to go with three. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> uh, three. Two on the episode, two on air, one in real life. Thanks wow. for that. Perfect. Perfect. And I really need to up my real life. 
Same, same episode. John says Drew looks like a celebrity. Who does he say he looks like? What? Just take a shot. Just Freddie tell Prince him what Jr. He <laughs> no. Wow. I don't remember that at all. I'm looking at Drew right now and I'm like, man, he does not look like a celebrity at all. Mm. Um, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah. That's a good, good one. Yes. Uh, Pee Wee Herman was the correct <laughs> answer. <laughs> that, that sounds like something John would say. Yeah. So I know. <laughs> Look at the hair. A little bit. A little bit. Same episode. Bit. Drew brings out the game golf or porn. Blanco yes. does very well at that game. Well, How many out of 20 does he answer correctly? Oh 13. My God. 18. 16. 16 is correct. He's right again. 16 of 20, he answers correctly. <laughs> episode 102 in June was Summer Games Fest. John did math on Devolver Digital's uh, presentation. He oh. said he loves their games, but hates their presentation. He did a percentage of 100%. how much of their presentation actually showed games. Oh, my God. You want to take a stab at what that percentage was? I, wanna, percent. I think it was 17. Mm. It was 21%, man. Fucking close, Drew. Good job. I don't remember that conversation. That was a complete guess. That is a scary yeah. number. One fifth of the presentation was showing a game. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. In episode 106, this was a this was a great episode here. Uh, we were doing time trials for Mushroom Gorge, and Drew was got second place. He was beaten by one hundred one tenth of a mm, second. That hurt. Who beat him? <laughs> Sean Abbott. Yeah, I think we should have it. Mm. DeLeon. Cruzzi. He's giving me that look. This is the first time that the name Andrew DeLeon was oh spoken. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. What a great guy. DeLeon. DeLeon came out in episode 106. <laughs> uh, episode 98, Dick Burns was mentioned for the first time. Dick Sideburns. John needs a PlayStation 5 game. He throws out these. Disco Elysium, God of War. Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5, and Shadow of Colossus, and says, Drew, pick one. Hmm. Drew picks. And he probably doesn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shadow of the Colossus. I Must be. I can't believe I would leave it up to him. You didn't. You just wanted me to feel that way. What did yeah. you I say? Think I, picked, I, picked, <laughs> I honestly picked Horizon. You picked God of War for him to play. Hmm. You, I don't and think then you that's the criticized me for playing it. Wow. I didn't criticize you. When? Yeah, you did. <laughs> when when Ragnarok came out, you were criticizing me for yeah, playing you the said, first why, why do you War. Why'd you play the old one? Ah, oh, man, I wish I would have just said uh, because you told me to. Uh, mm, this opportunity. Debatable. <laughs> uh, episode 96 back in March. This I love this story. Drew has a golf league on a certain night of the week. Oh, yeah. And in order for him to secure this golf league, he becomes the T-ball coach of his son's league so he can schedule the kids league around his golf league. Definitely That's happen. a fucking baller move, man. Gotta I'm see so what you gotta do. Move. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> what night of the week is Drew's <laughs> golf league on? It's Wednesday. John? I'll take Wednesday. I, I don't know. I don't know. Drew? It's Thursday. Ah, it I fucked it. Sorry, John. <laughs> you were so confident, Ambo. Yeah, I was <laughs> confident. I, said yeah. That with- I did. Gusto. Next episode, 97 in April. How much is a fart in a jar? Oh, I think it's like two dollars $200. Yeah, I think it's $200. Probably low. $200. It was $1,000. What? It's a lot of yeah. it's a Wow. Lot of yeah. It's a lot yeah. of I think it's 200 for the bath sub water in the jar. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More of that. How many months was the Kyber Bricks uh, bounty going on? <laughs> four, five. I was, gonna, I was gonna say four months. Four and a half. Yay, we're all right. That's the middle. <laughs> Episode ninety-five in March. Drew says Seltza and Fanta, which is <laughs> <laughs> very Drew. <laughs> Instead of Orange Fanta, he says Fanta. Fanta. I loved Fanta. it. Hey, don't you uh, want? This is the first time we heard of TV see what, I don't see what's wrong with that. <laughs> Drew says this. This movie was mostly about preteen girls, and that's great. What movie was he talking about? It's bad timing. That's what I'm going to say about it. 
This is ter- <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I almost deleted that question, but I thought that we might as well just throw it out. Oh, it's nice. all of it. <laughs> that, that didn't you say the exact quote one more time? <laughs> this movie was mostly about preteen girls, and that's great. Are we trying to guess the movie? Because I what what month was this in? Uh, this was in March, March fourteenth, episode ninety five. This movie, movie yeah, or TV show? I don't know. Red Panda was the name oh, of the movie. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. The Disney one. Yep. In the episode before, you had the wonderful guest on, Brett Martin from NF yes. Magazine. Good what a dude. great time we all had listening to him. On that show, John offers Drew $50 if he can guess what was on the cover of the first NF Magazine. I will double that if you can guess it now, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I think I knew it. We Sports. No. No, but I think that was your guess then. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it was, any was, other guesses? Uh it was Fire Emblem Awakening. It was. Yep. Yep. Yes. Good job. Still wouldn't have got that. <laughs> uh back in January, episode ninety, there was a world record of dudes fucked in twelve hours. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. Can you get close to that number? Like, can he do it, or can he guess no, the number? No, this was a Guinness. Remember, we had the Guinness Book Record, yeah. repeating yep. theme. Can you can you guess how many dudes this fortunate lady was mm. fortunate enough to have in her vagina in twelve hours? I, I want to add, talented lady. Yes, five hundred. Uh, I'm gonna go four hundred. I'm gonna go four ninety nine. Eight thirty two. 832. Wasn't that the 919? Holy moly. I think John did the math and said it was like one every 45 seconds or something. No, that's way more than 40 once every 40. 919 in an hour? No, No, 12 uh, hours. 12 hours. 12 hours? Listen to the question, John. 76 per hour. In May. Okay, you're right. 45 (laughs) seconds. In May, episode 99. These are some just some fun facts here. I don't know if this is a question. John says, well, hold on. I do have a question. John says the Strikers Club should be called what? <laughs> oh, what a, probably a terrible idea. You're talking about Strikers coming out. You're like, this is coming out. We need to start a club. Let's call it this. Milf Hunters. Mm, damn good guess. Was it funny or just stupid? Uh, you Was wanted it hilarious? to call it Sex Club. That's just Excellent. stupid. That's not even yeah. funny. That's not even funny. <laughs> That's that doesn't sound funny. funny at all. In the same episode, John Pull Blanco the- also says Nintendo should sh- close up shop if no first party cards come to Wii Sports or <laughs> s- Nintendo Switch Sports. Nintendo should shut it down if you get no first party cards. I stand so by I'd it. Throw that in there. I he stand still, by it. The sad part is he still thinks there's hope. I think there is hope, but I, I, I. <laughs> I like I said I I if they don't I don't know why I don't know why they put episode their shit one hundred three in June Drew goes to Legoland there are four areas themes. to stay in four themes rooms yes would you like to name those themes or don't do you ask want me Hambo. to name them and he you went. tell me which I one know. Drew stayed in me and Hambo know them all I know, so I know you... everything so this is a John question yeah. Um, John, I'll give you the themes. Castle? You try to remember which one Drew stayed in. Okay. The kingdom theme, the pirate theme, the Lego friends theme, or the Ninjago theme. Oh, it was definitely the the castle, the kingdom, like the, the castle. That's theme. right. Yep. 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 Sure did you did. guys see the end of Lego Builders? I did. I need to watch it. I, I, won't, I won't spoil special? anything except for that the winner's um, final piece is going to Legoland New York on display. Mm-hmm. So the next time you go to Legoland New York, yes, you can actually either. see the build. That I'll the say team I, I was disappointed that's in awesome. all three of the final builds, but that's just me. Yeah, none of them were spectacular. Also, I'll though. say, did you see that there's a Christmas special with celebrities on it starting tomorrow? Yeah, well, that three parter cool. or something weird. Like yeah. that? Anyways, I only have a few left. Okay. Back in September, episode 109, Chris H.L. sends in a question and asks, what's your go-to porn genre? (laughs) Drew said having multiple tabs open on his computer and basically going through a story through multiple porns. What was John's answer? (laughs) What's John's go-to porn genre? He's the MILF. He's a MILF hunter. 
something That's right. middle age or something. Yeah. You know? Stand by it. Yep. Uh, definitely Back over 18. In January, sure. the first episode of the year. What was the first bounty? The first b- bounty ever? <sighs> first bounty of the year. I guess you all started them this year, right? Yeah. 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 No idea, John. I should know. Yeah. I don't know why I don't know. No clue. No clue. No. Uh, Can you give us a Big hint? Brain Academy getting three oh. platinum medals on that. You know, one. that's another game, man. I I need to get back to that. That yeah, was another fun game for a that while. was stupid that I couldn't play with my family and unlock stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You stupid. were pissed about that. I was yeah. Several. I'm still several bitter. Days. I'm yeah. more bitter than not getting first party <laughs> cards for John. How There's... many episodes, including bonus episodes and this here episode, have either me or Hambone Johnny been on this year? This Ooh. year. Ooh, this year. This Ooh. year. I think you guys have been on two of them this year. So this would be three? Would this? No, I think this would be two. I think they did the... Um... Would you count PlayStation dads and stuff like that? Well, we have, yep. to, we have to go through that. But um, in terms yep. of regular episodes, this one and then the... What was the one that they were on? The one after they came back from the trip? Or no? Maybe not. Oh, yeah. Then, we did the direct. We did the direct uh, yeah. reaction in March. Maybe they were on three regular episodes. Yeah, I want to say six total. Yeah, and then we had three PlayStation three dads. Who's who yeah. came on one day, just random episode, just who's. I remember that as well. Yeah, that's I feel why like, I think I'm at six. I feel like, Hambone, you were in one other thing. So I'm going to say seven. Seven is the correct answer. Hambone was in some random thing. Yeah, I think you were uh, in some other. It was other. the Stray, oh, Stray. Spoiler cast. Yeah, Stray, Stray, yeah. Spoiler cast. yeah. <laughs> Drew's favorite okay, game. Okay, last one. John mentioned Life is Strange. In the first episode of the year, when did he when did he not say the phrase Life is Strange? I don't think there's any episodes I didn't say it. Uh, Wait, what episode me, did he, like, how many episodes did he go without saying yeah, it? Yeah. Let's let's I, let's go with that. How many episodes in a row did John Blanco say the words Life is Strange? Well, <laughs> fuck did you track this did 12. you just like have a 12. notepad with a little category like how did you track this it, this was my pride and joy this it's was a, the one i was listening to this is the one i was listening for wow it's a relevant you have like how? a uh, like a pitch counter every time yeah tick, i'm going 12 tick, yeah probably more epi- no but the question is how many episodes in a row did i not say it did no, you, no. Did you say it? Oh, like okay. You start in episode one. How many yep. did you go before you stopped? I'm going 12. Not episode one, episode 89, yes, the first correct. one of the year. Yeah. Okay. And then you said Life is Strange through consecutive episodes. Just the main ones. I don't know Probably what you still did going. on the side of it. <laughs> this g- hasn't ended yet. Yeah. I'll say like seven. 19. <laughs> We've done 19 <laughs> episodes. Uh, let's see. He said it in. January 3rd, episode 89, and he did not say it in June. <laughs> episode 103. Oh, my God. So he went 12 or 13 episodes wow. with saying the phrase, just life is strange, wow. and at least one time in every episode. I want to know awesome. why I stopped. What I mean, what happened? <laughs> More than 50% of the episodes this year probably have it mentioned. There, there yeah. have been episodes where I, I find a reason to, to put it in there just as like the calling card. But uh, yeah, I'm, it is. Yeah. That, yeah, there were several where you just throw it in at the end. Like, You're I like mean, the it's wet no life is strange, but it was an yeah. okay game. Good night, dads. Life is strange. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's all I got. Those were all the questions. That's the year wrap up. I thought it was fantastic. What year. a great job. I know that's a lot of effort, too, so I appreciate yeah, that. Awesome. Well, it's not an easy task. Yeah, it's, I listen it's funny to that too you can much of you fuckers. <laughs> yes, well. These seems so you don't long remember ago. the stuff about yourselves, you know? I don't remember. Ask John what I remember. He'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was awesome. It was. That was a long, loaded night um, filled with possible technical issues and uh lots of fun um we'll see where we go from here guys mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah. sounds good um yeah. but it was great to have you guys give your best game year i think i think it was a good variety um that was a that was a fun time i think i think every game of the year show should have as many voices as possible 
to yeah. what was your number two game could you get some some weird shit as your number two spider heck was number three spider heck uh, number two, three two was cuphead dlc <laughs> one was stray right so i feel like with number one i think we hit the, the the true best games of the year but i love the the variety and hopefully people who listen um hear some of these games and, and go play them especially these these weirder ones because as weird as they are as majin treasures or whatever <laughs> um those are the ones that people aren't playing so that's the right they, they won't shouldn't. and they shouldn't yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they should not um but that wraps it up for season three mm. um we are not going to be on break right drew we are going to be uh right on schedule like last year i think we had a three or four week break um but this time around we're going to be right on schedule i think for new year's day is that our plan sure new year's day do it up maybe a special or two between now and then but yeah we'll be there yeah definitely um and we've got a bunch of changes that are coming in for season three nothing earth shattering though four. uh season four <laughs> uh, nothing us, earth, earth shattering, but um we've got some fun changes we paid sadie a lot of money you paid i did not approve you it came out of your account <laughs> um sadie's rate hey, has gone up with that. yeah it's she's getting more popular right? so she's here's got- a fun fact we paid over triple for season four than what we paid in triple in season three and wow she's expensive i said yeah. no good, and john man. said do it we anyway had, we had more dialogue we gave her this time not, too not but, much um, her rate did go up she has a bunch of reviews like she's her rate definitely went up and we tip her well um i should but, start charging y'all for my songs you should you should you should, you should go on things like sadie does and offer that to people I theme should. songs yeah. theme songs based on robin hood yeah <laughs> just specialize did you play the music no or you're not a musician okay just wanted to oh i'm a musician drew just fucking listen to this <laughs> 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 i was about to sing another song for you I love songs. um we gotta we gotta work that into the show though for season four we're yes we're, we're we're gonna gonna nice i mean that's already the perfect gene we don't need another one yeah no it's perfectly recorded <laughs> all right what do, we, what do we have coming up nothing we got sports story coming up. When's we don't it coming know that out? When is sure. it? Delayed. I'm going to ask right no. now. If it's it comes out this week, I feel like it's the only time it can come out this week, right before Christmas. What day <laughs> is it coming out this week? Any guesses? Friday or well, Thursday, Thursday night, whatever the hell they do it. Yeah. Thursday, I'm going to guess the 30th. Oh, I think you, it's delayed. I don't know if it's Christmas. coming out. If it doesn't come out, go play soccer story. That was pretty fun. I know. Well, I'm, I'm too busy finding treasure. Hmm. I think it's going to come out Tuesday. I think it's going to be announced uh, tomorrow or Tuesday, and I think we're going to get it um, Tuesday. Are you going to play it day one when it comes out this week? Are you dropping treasures, or are you going to play I it? I don't know. I'm going to have to. I mean, we don't even know anything about it, to be honest, really, I feel mm. like. <laughs> I'm not juiced for it. I'm not juiced. I'm not. I, these games take so long, you know, like the DLC for Top Pad and shit that it's like, oh, that was there. I mean, I still played that, but you lose the hype. The hype train is, has taken off. Yeah, yeah, you lose the height, but as soon as you dip that toe back in the water, you're going to be hooked, man. I hear you. I hear you. Can yeah. anyone remember when uh, Golf Story was released? Wow. It was, it was probably the first game I played. It was 2017. Yeah, like September. June of 17. September it was the first... 28th, 2017. One of the wow. first digital games I bought on the Switch. After... Yeah, me too. It might have been the first. Wow. That's crazy. That I mean, that, like yeah, their turnaround is. time is almost as long as Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All right. All righty. Let's All right, guys. That's right. Thank nice you, guys. Coming, Jen. That's a wrap on season three. Good night, Good Dad. Bye. This was fun. I like the long episodes. The Dads After Dark show is part of the Nintendo Dads family of podcasts. You can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available, including iTunes, Castbox, Spotify, and Stitcher. Also, don't forget to leave us a five-star review. Pretty please. Be sure to join us on the Nintendo Dads Discord in our Dads After Dark channel for some naughty After Dark talk. Follow us on Twitter at NDadsAfterDark or email us at dadsafterdarkshow at gmail.com. And a big thank you to Family Jewels for our show's music. You rock. That's all for tonight. Good night, Dads. Sweet dreams. <laughs>